UCLA Bruins. Brought to you by the Southern California Chevrolet dealers. Come in and test drive the Chevy of your dreams. Then drive home with a deal of a lifetime. Only at your Southern California Chevrolet dealers. By Great Western's family of companies with over $30 billion in assets. 100 years strong, we'll always be there. By Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. By La Pat's Blue, Canada's number one selling beer. It's Blue Heaven. And by your local Volkswagen dealer, where you can experience German engineering the Volkswagen way. From the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, Prime Ticket presents College Football 88. Today, the UCLA Bruins host the Stanford Cardinals. Hello everybody, this is Mike Walden and welcome to the Rose Bowl and UCLA's homecoming game. Today, the Bruins taking on Stanford. Now this is the last hurdle for the Bruins prior to the USC showdown a week away. Stanford does present some problems for UCLA because the last two times Stanford has played here in the Rose Bowl against the Bruins, Stanford has won. And an oddity in this series is the fact that the visiting team has won the last five games in this series. So, Jack Snow, if that SC showdown is to be meaningful from a UCLA standpoint with Rose Bowl overtones, then the Bruins must get by Stanford today. Well, absolutely, Mike. There's no question of the fact that today's game is so important for UCLA, and it's not going to be an easy ball game. Stanford has done an outstanding job this year. Yeah, they have lost a lot of ball games, but they've been very close in most of those games. You think of Stanford, you think of a passing team, but this year they're getting a great deal of running from John Volpe, a tough little 5'7", 195-pound sophomore. I tell you, this kid is outstanding. He leads the Pac-10 with 944 yards in rushing, and if you could convert a football field into a pinball machine, this guy would be the pinball. He'll bounce off tacklers. He's averaging five yards a crack, covers the ball up nicely. Is he tough inside tackle to tackle? Stanford started the season with Brian Johnson at quarterback, but six games ago, Coach Elway bench Johnson in favor of a redshirt freshman, Jason Columbus. And you can see that Columbus had a very good week last week against Washington State, 18 of 30 for 239 yards and two TDs. If there's one drawback to Jason Columbus, it's that he does not come out of the gates real fast. Most of the times in these ball games in the first half, he's had a little problem adjusting to the coverage and going to the right receiver, but he's been playing very, very well in the second half. Speaking of adjusting, UCLA's running game will have to adjust today. Eric Ball, the leading rusher, will not play. He had a sprained ankle in the second half against Oregon and is out of this game. They hope he can be ready for USC. Absolutely, but I'll tell you what, the Bruin ground game has definitely got to improve. The last few weeks, they have not done well at all. So, you know, in the spotlight today in the running attack for UCLA will be a 5'9 sophomore from Carson, Brian Brown. Well, Brian Brown, he's played in four games in a row, 102 yards rushing last week versus the Ducks of Oregon. And I'll tell you, on this run right here in which he goes 68 yards for a TD, gets a couple of good blocks from his fullback Mark Estwick and Frank Cornish. You'll see him come in 68. And Brown makes a real nice hurdle move right here to get by a duck. Now he's off to the races, 68 yards and a touchdown, an outstanding back. They're going to need him to pick up the slack for an injured Eric Ball, and he's got to have a good day for that UCLA ground attack. Of course, Brown missed the first five games of the campaign due to a hamstring, but he is healthy now, and he certainly is in the center spotlight filling in for Eric Ball today. And how does he feel about being in the number one spot with all of the heavy burden of the UCLA ground attack resting on his shoulders? Well, naturally, he is very excited about it. Yeah, it's like... Before you uh, ever even come to a uh, uh, certain school to play, you always look forward to being a big impact player on the team, getting the start, getting the call. So like I said, this is my chance, and I'm going to try to make the most of it. And indeed, we're about to find out if Brian Brown can make the most of it. Well, there's no question that the Bruins uh, really need him. They're, he's uh, an outstanding attribute in their running game. And again, with Eric Ball being out, they're going to need his performance today. This is an unusual Stanford football team, and this statement may sound contradictory, but Stanford often plays just well enough to get beat because the Cardinal they have lost four games in the conference by a total of just 14 points. Well, you know, you look at their team, and, and you're right, they have lost four games by 14 points, and there's a tie in there also. Jack Elway, the head coach of the Stanford Cardinal, is not unhappy with the performance. He can't criticize his kids, 
or come down on them because they have been giving the supreme effort week in and week out. Unfortunately, they're just a little bit short, and you give the Stanford Cardinal 19 points, and suddenly they become 6-0 in the Pac-10. Well, the odds makers have given UCLA 20 points because the Bruins are favored by that amount against Stanford today. Stand by for the kickoff as UCLA, with a record of 8-1 and 5-1 and in Pac-10 play, goes up against the Stanford Cardinals, Stanford 3-5-1, 1-4-1 in the Pac-10. Stanford has won the toss and the Cardinal has elected to receive. So it will be Kurt Maggio kicking off for UCLA and it'll be Kevin Scott at the goal line. Kevin Scott, a sophomore from Phoenix, Arizona, is dropped right around the 16. And making the tackle for UCLA was Kelton Alexander. So Jason Columbus, six feet three, 205 pounds, a red shirt freshman, has completed 55% of his passes since he became a starter. He has thrown eight touchdown passes, but notice five have been intercepted. This is his sixth start at quarterback since replacing Brian Johnson. Jason Columbus, a prep All-American from Lake Oswego, Oregon. First and 10 for Stanford. The line of scrimmage is the Stanford 16. Right away, it's Volpe. John Volpe is up to about the 18. Volpe is not 100%. He has some badly bruised ribs, and for the first time this season is playing with a flak jacket. Davis and Darby making the tackle. On offense for Stanford, Young and Volpe, the running backs, although Volpe will be doing most of the work. Green, Batson, and Walsh, the receivers. Carpenter, Papathana, CU, Sinclair, Gillingham, and Zipner, the offensive line. And that offensive line averages 277 pounds tackle to tackle. It's Volpe again, just across the 20, before he's cut down by Craig Davis and Chance Johnson. Chance Johnson, the leading tackler for UCLA, averaging nine tackles per game. Mike Lodish, Jim Waller, and Steve Mayer up front. Mayer again filling in for Brian Wilcox. And the linebackers, Eric Smith, Craig Davis, Chance Johnson, Carnell Lake. The secondary, Daryl Hindley, Marcus Turner, Matt Darby, and Eric Turner. Third and seven for Stanford. The ball just across the 20-yard line as you look at the Stanford quarterback, Jason Columbus. On third and seven, he swings it off to Volpe. Volpe to the 20. And Volpe is going to be nailed right around uh, the 28-yard line. John Volpe running very hard, trying to pick up that first down. It looks like he's got it with about a half yard to spare. The tackle on Volpe made by the free safety, Eric Turner. It looks like it's going to be a wide pass downfield, but in actuality, it's a screen pass here. Volpe takes the ball. Looks like he stopped right there by Johnson. But as we talked about earlier, he keeps moving. A little pinball, and he bounces, picks up the first down. The ball is right at the Stanford 28. First and 10. In motion is Charlie Young. They like to throw to Young on this particular play. Instead, they go off to Chris Walsh. And Walsh is stopped at the 35-yard line. A pickup of seven yards. As Jack Elway, in his fifth year as the head coach at Stanford, has uh, seen his ball club self-destruct on occasions, but they've been in almost every game. In fact, with the break here and there, Jack Elway could be bringing the Stanford team into the Rose Bowl with a record of 8-1. and one. Stanford has been blown out of just one game. The loss to Notre Dame, 42-14, back in South Bend, Indiana. Volpe in the middle. And Volpe gets a couple of yards, brought down by inside linebacker Craig Davis. They will mark his progress at the 37-yard line. One thing they say about John Volpe, he has a very low center of gravity. He is tough to bring down. Well, I'll tell you what, Mike, when you're 5'7", 195 pounds, there's no question you carry a lot of the weight in your in your buttocks area and in your upper thighs and you're very strong as you look at him leading the Pac-10 with 944 yards and six touchdowns. Volpe bench presses 330 pounds. Remember, he stands only five feet, seven inches tall. Volpe again, nothing doing that time. Jim Waller meets him head on and throws him for a loss. Jim Waller, who has four quarterback sacks to his credit, as having a good senior year. We'll get a shot of Volpe now. Remember, 195 pounds on a 5'7 inch frame, but an excellent job by Jim Waller to come in here and make the tackle, fights off the block of the center. Volpe's brought down, and that's how you got to bring Volpe down. Tackle him, wrap him up immediately. Don't let him bounce off you. On fourth down, John Hopkins to bump for Stanford. Deep is Daryl Hintley for UCLA. The left footer gets it away. 
And Henley gathers this ball in at the 24. Retreats to the 22. He's got a good throw it up ahead. He is up across the 40-yard line. Nice return by Daryl Henley. A 39-yard punt by Hopkins. An 18-yard return by Daryl Henley. The tackle on Henley made by Chris Hawkins. You watch Henley, you think he's going to fair catch it because there's a Stanford Cardinal right in his face. Now the wall is being set up to the right side. One, two key blocks. He tries to get to the wall. Now he goes man-to-man -man against one Cardinal. He gets by him, and he may almost take it all away before he's finally brought down. A nice return, a nice read of your wall by Daryl Henley. At quarterback for UCLA is the senior from Henrietta, Oklahoma, Troy Aikman. First down for the Bruins from the 41. The pitch goes to Brian Brown. And Brown gets about five yards, moving up just across the 45. Put down by the right cornerback, Kevin Scott. Troy Aikman has 38 career touchdown passes, 21 this season, which ties the UCLA record most passes in one season, set by Tom Ramsey in 82 and tied now by Troy Aikman in 88. Second down five for the Bruins, the ball at the 46. Estwick and Brown in the backfield. This time it is Estwick. Estwick, the 223-pound sophomore fullback from Loyola High School, is stopped by linebacker Rob Hinckley. Brian Brown and Estwick, the ball carriers for UCLA. The receivers, Mike Farr, Reggie Moore, and Charles Arbuckle at tight end. Bobby Menefield, Rick Meyer, Frank Cornish, Lance Zeno, Bill Page, trying to give Aikman all of the protection he would need this day. First down for UCLA, the ball at the 47 of the Bruins. In motion, Brown. Aikman ready to throw his first pass of the day, and it is low to Brown. He tried to catch it with one hand near his right hip, but the ball was thrown behind him. Incomplete. Rob Inglehart covering for Stanford. Let's check over the Stanford defense. Lester Archambault is one of the defensive tackles, along with Scott Palmbush. And Ray Huckstein is in the middle of the nose guard. The linebackers, Rob Hinckley, Kevin Richardson, John O'Tunney, and Bruce Lang. In the backfield, the secondary for Stanford, Grant, Scott Englehart, and Newton. He is Brown struggling for a yard or two up near the 46 of Stanford. Brian Brown, a sophomore, the number three rusher for the Bruins, averaging five yards a carry. The tackle on Brown made by Ray Huckstein and Kevin Richardson. Jim Mercer, great official in the Pac-10 conference for a number of years, gracing us with his presence in the booth today. Jim was one of the top officials in the league throughout the nation for that matter. Third and eight for the Bruins. No score. We're in the first five minutes of the first quarter. Aikman right folks. This one complete at the 29 to Reggie Moore. The pass a little bit high. Moore went up the ladder to make the grab and then was brought down immediately by Alan Grant. 17 yards on the pass play. Troy Aikman to Reggie Moore. And the Bruins have a first down at the Stanford 29. Going to Reggie Moore out of the slot formation. And the reason the pass is high. Look at 43 right there. 43 is right in a proper position. But a good job by Aikman to getting the ball over Rob Hinckley and into the arms of Reggie Moore on a curl route. There he is, Reggie Moore. His 32nd catch of the season. Far to the left, more to the right. From the 28, the pitch to Brown. Brown at the 25, still on his feet. At the 20, out of bounds, inside the 15. Brian Brown appeared to be stopped, but he kept those legs moving and churning, and it was Rob Englehart, the strong safety, who had to knock him out of bounds at the 14. A little toss action by the Brewers. Now watch as Brian Brown, 5'9", 185 pounds, a nice cut back, and he'll bounce back to the outside. Gets in a lot of traffic. Alan Grant has a shot at him, but Brown keeps those feet moving before he's finally run out of bounds. Excellent job of running by Brian Brown. A gain of 15 by Brown. The Bruins with a first down at the Stanford 13. Brown again. Brown to the five. Brown down to the three-yard line. Tackled by Rob Englehart. 
I think Stanford anticipated Aikman throwing, and the Bruins crossed him up and sent Brown down the middle to the three. This is an audible. Aikman sees something up the middle, and he utilizes those interior linemen, Zeno, Cornish, and Rick Meyer, to do an excellent job of blocking, allowing Brian Brown to scoot up in there and pick up some yardage. The Bruins, of course, operating without Eric Ball, and Brian Brown is indeed making the most of his opportunity so far. That's what Brown has done so far this season. And the Bruins will go out of the eye, sending Thompson in motion. The give is to Brown, the tailback. He's stacked up at the two. Scott Palmbush making the initial contact and then had help from about four or five other Stanford players, and they shoved him back to the three. Let's wait and see where referee Larry Thompson will mark his progress. They say he was stopped at the line of scrimmage to three. So it'll be second and goal. Terry Donahue with the victory here today. It would be his 70th in the Pac-10, which would put him into some very elite select company. Don James of Washington also has 70 conference victories. And John McKay of USC, 70 as well. Terry with 69 coming in here today. Second and goal, the ball at the three. Aikman wants to pass. He's got time. Pumps once. And now he's going to be nailed back at the seven. The tackle was made by Ray Huckstein, the nose guard. So Aikman couldn't find anybody open and had to eat the ball back at the six or seven. Looked like he was trying to go to either Mike Farr or Reggie Moore. And Reggie Moore has injured his ankle a little bit on that last play. The one thing that Aikman did do that was smart is he did not release the football. He brought it back down and tried to scramble and get what he could get. Arbuckle is the tight end on the left side. Third and six, the ball at the six. The tailback, Brown. Aikman rolling to his right. Fires, and no good. Alan Grant was covering on the play as Aikman was firing in the corner to Brian Brown. And it seems that when the Bruins get down to the six, they have trouble. Remember at Washington State, the closing seconds? Will anybody ever forget? There's no question that UCLA basically does the same thing when they get down inside that 10-yard line, and particularly around the five. They run the uh, deep man in motion to the back, and they'll send the one guy in the flat, and teams see this when they study films. Velasco will attempt the field goal, a 23-yard attempt. It should be a chip shot for Alfredo out of the hole of Kurt Maggio. Page making the snap, and it is right through. So the Bruins don't get the touchdown, but have to settle for the field goal of 23 yards by Alfredo Velasco, who is now 12 out of 13 in field goals this season. College Football 88 is brought to you by Volkswagen, who invites you to see the Volkswagen Fox today at your local Volkswagen dealer. And by Labatt's Blue, Canada's number one selling beer. It's blue heaven. It's three to nothing UCLA on the field goal by Velasco. But there is concern in the UCLA camp about the Bruin offense, Jack Snow. Well, there is. The last couple of weeks, in particular, their ground game, they have not done what, they, what they're capable of doing. UCLA coming into this ballgame is averaging 208 yards rushing per game, but they haven't realized that the last three weeks. And in order for them to get ready for next week in particular, they've got to put some yards uh, on the ground, Mike, and they've got to rush that ball very well. UCLA is averaging 36 points a game. Stanford, 22 points a game. It's interesting, the only time that UCLA has not scored first, they lost that to Washington State. So the Bruins have scored first today. Three to nothing UCLA. Kevin Scott will field this one five yards deep, make no attempt to run it out. The touchback will give Stanford the ball with a first and 10 at the 20. Jack Elway said the other day, when somebody said, how do you assess this Stanford football team of yours? And Elway's reply, we're not in the top 10 of the nation, but our schedule certainly is. That's right. They played an awful lot of the top 10 people. They played Notre Dame, and as you mentioned earlier, Notre Dame, the only team to actually physically manhandle the Cardinal team. So they're a good, scrappy young group. Offensively, they'll run out of a multitude of sets, and they're an exciting offensive football team. And remember this, too. Stanford came within a couple of minutes of upsetting UCLA back in September. Columbus in deep trouble. Somehow. Finally going to be pulled out. I'm going to say he's going to get away, but Mike Lodish got him around the jersey and the shoulder pads and just flung into the turf. 
Mike Lodish, a 6'3", 253-pound junior from Birmingham, Michigan, registering his third quarterback sack. Nice job of hustle on the part of Lodish. The pressure will come from up the middle. That's Jim Waller and the rest of the guys come in, force him out of the pocket. 98, Eric Smith forces him out wide. In comes 94, makes that grasp. Look at the strength in there. Holds him with just one hand and brings him down. Excellent play by Mike Lodish. Lone running back is John Volpe for Stanford. In motion is the tight end, Price. Here comes Volpe. That little guy is something, isn't he? <laughs> he is. He I really mean, is. I don't think one person can bring him down one on one. You got to have some help. Well, he is so low. It's not like you've got a guy that's six foot four inches tall running the football, or even six foot or six three. He's a little teeny guy, and when he bends over, he goes from five seven down to about five foot tall. So you've got a very small target, and once you get a shot at that target, you have got to make the most of it from a defensive perspective. A gain of five by Volpe, who got a fine block from the left guard, and a Papathanasio. He's from Emerson, New Jersey. Papa Fantasio. Third and 15. The ball at the Stanford 15. Columbus in the pocket. In trouble. Down he goes. Eric Smith records the sack. Elway not too happy about it, Mike, and he realizes that uh, in order for him to get this offense moving, he's got to have some good pass protection. Coming into the game, the Cardinal allowed only 16 sacks, and they're not in good shape today. Another fine job by Eric Smith, 26 career sacks, most among active Bruins. Excellent job. John Hopkins, almost tickling the end line, is ready to punt. Making the snap is Kevin Richardson, a linebacker for Stanford. Hopkins gets it away. Not a very good kick. It hits at the 35 and flips out of bounds at the 43. And the Bruins will have a first down at the Stanford 43 following the 35-yard punt by Hopkins. Three to nothing, UCLA, thanks to a field goal by Velasco of 23 yards. Bruins with a great opportunity right now. The ball at the Stanford 43. Frank Cornish is the center. Bobby Menefield and Lance Zeno, the guards. Bill Page, Rick Meyer, the tackles. Rick Meyer, by the way, uh, has had only one day of practice in the last three weeks for UCLA. He's been sidelined with injuries and the flu, but he answers the bell on Saturday. That's the bottom line. Aikman ready to go long and deep, and he throws it complete to the tight end, Arbuckle. Arbuckle takes the ball to the 36 where he shoved out of bounds and going deep and appearing to be open was Reggie Moore. Yes, you saw that too. Stanford was in a zone defense. They rolled the corner up and the inside man went deep to the outside. And I'll tell you what, Reggie Moore broke wide open behind the front man and in front of the deep guy. Let's see if they come back to that later on. Brendan McCracken and Arbuckle are on the right side. McCracken wide right. David Keating is wide left. Tailback, Brian Brown. The pitch to Brown at the 35, and Brown is pulled out at the 31. Rob Englehart got him again, the strong safety for Stanford. But a pickup of five yards and a first down for UCLA. Nice block by Mark Estwick on that last play. Number 22, a lead block for Brian Brown. Brown running very well. He looks good. He looks quick. And he's got the opportunity to be the starter for the Bruins. And I don't think he wants to give that up. Keating goes to the left. In the slot to left is Mike Farr. Aikman's pitch is to Keating at the 20. And Keating is rolled down. And a penalty marker is dropped. As Keating is rolled down at the 18. The tackle made by Brad Cook. 13 yards on the pass play from Troy Aikman to David Keating. We may have a uh, holding or uh, not holding face mask grabbing or a personal foul on that last play. Here's Keating right here, 20. Uh, th watch now, 18 comes in here. Let's see what happens. Brad Cook at the end of the play. There's the face mask right there as he brings him down. You can't do that. You can really hurt guys very, very seriously. But an excellent job by David Keating making the catch, getting all he could. Face mask. They're going to get about another one, defense. 10 yards or so. That's the face mask penalty. Larry Thompson is the referee. He's from Orange, California. Larry is a school administrator for the Los Alamitos School District. That brings the ball down to the 14 of Stanford. 
first and ten now for UCLA at the Stanford 14. The Bruins are already up three to nothing. And by the way, UCLA has scored in 203 straight games and NCAA record. Last time UCLA was shut out, September the 17th, 1971 at Michigan, 38 to nothing. It's Brown. Brown carries a lot of tacklers with him as he pounds his way to the seven. Brown indeed is making the most of his opportunity with Eric Ball sideline with a sprained ankle. Well, Brown running hard. He's running hard inside as well as outside and on the dive play straight up the middle. What he's doing, he's hitting that hole at full speed. He's not looking for a seam. He's just going up there, blasting up into there between his guards and centers and trying to create the seam himself. Good hard running by Brian Brown. Tackle was made by John O'Tunney. Brown has carried seven times for 43 yards. Aikman gives to Brown again, and Brian Brown scores for UCLA. A seven-yard burst down the middle by the sophomore out of Gardena High School, number 30, Brian Brown. We talked about his explosive dust running up the gut. Now watch him as he hits in here, gets a couple of good blocks and finds his team. Now watch him run over one of the safeties. Puts that head down, covers up the ball, and he just bursts over two Cardinals, takes him into the end zone. Mike Newton cannot stop him for Stanford. Touchdown for Brian Brown. Nice job of running, Brian. Velasco in to kick the extra point, and Velasco has been perfect this year. 37 out of 37, and that record is still intact. The extra point by Alfredo Velasco, and and UCLA takes a 10-0 lead over Stanford with about three and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Tomorrow afternoon at 4, the Pac-10 College Football Game of the Week features the Oregon Ducks and the Arizona Wildcats. For the best in college sports, stay tuned to Prime Ticket. Our buddies Jeff Witcher and Tom Flores will have that one 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon on the Prime Ticket Network. UCLA does well in the first quarter indeed. Take a look at that graphic if you will. The Bruins have outscored opponents 106 to 9 in the first quarter. Very strong, good first quarter. There's even a stronger second quarter team. We'll see that a little bit later. They have had a tendency to kind of cool down in the third quarter, UCLA has. Today they can't afford to do that. Ozio kicking off to either Grant or Scott. It is Alan Grant. For some reason or other, Grant didn't seem to have a great burst of speed. He was sort of uh, loping rather than running. Well, he's looking for that wedge, Mike, and you can't do that. you got to get up and hit up into that wedge and hope that they can knock somebody down, creating a hole. And you're right, uh, Grant looks like he was running a little bit on broken, uh, broken eggshells there for a while. It didn't look good at all. Grant tackled by Brian Lockwood. Stanford down 10 to nothing. We'll have a first down at the 18, the Stanford 18. Up front for Stanford is Andy Sinclair, a four-year starter. He is the center for the Stanford Cardinal. Volpe is the lone running back. Columbus throws, just does get it away to Volpe. Volpe is dropped at about the 19. Chance Johnson put the pressure on Columbus, and then he just did get the pass away to Volpe behind the line. Columbus does a good job of recognizing the pressure of the linebacker blitz. You'll see it coming from the left side. Here comes 31, Carnell Lake in there. And uh, Columbus, an excellent job of dumping that ball off to John Volpe. Now watch Volpe trying to cut back, get a block or two. But in this situation, excellent tackling by the UCLA defense allows him not to bounce off and gain any more yardage. Chris Walsh in motion. Columbus throwing to Henry, and he has it. Henry Green, the wide receiver making the catch and then stepping out of bounds. 12 yards on the pass play. Matt Darby on coverage. A simple square out, but watch the job that Henry Green does after he takes the catch of keeping inbounds. Watch him stretch for the ball and know when those feet have got to stay inbounds. One, two, taps him down. Excellent job by Henry Green. Henry Green, a senior from Inglewood, California, was a quarterback in high school. Now he's catching the passes rather than throwing them. Green ranks as the number five man on the Stanford receiving list. Charlie Young is the number one guy with 39 catches. Columbus going to Chris Walsh. 
And Walsh has another first down, and suddenly the Stanford passing game is starting to make its presence felt. Matt Darby making the tackle on Walsh. Here's Walsh right here in the slot. He's going to run basically a goal pass. Now watch he gets to the outside. He run by the linebacker, and I watch the ball come right in. He stops, comes back to make sure he makes the catch. A nice job of receiving by Chris Walsh, and he's a redshirt freshman. Now, Columbus has been sacked twice here in the first quarter, but Jason Columbus is perfect in passing. Five out of five for 44 yards. 2-16 left here in the first quarter, 10-0 UCLA. Mike Walden and Jack Snow with you. The pass to Charlie Young at the 50. Young is out of bounds near the 47 of UCLA. Charlie Young from Glencoe, Illinois, a sophomore. Escorted out of bounds by Marcus Turner. Charlie Young coming out of the backfield. In most instances, he's a leading receiver on his Stanford Cardinal team. But I'll tell you what, he doesn't carry the ball too much, but has great hands and good moves. Yes, they list him as a tailback. I guess it would be more correct to say he really is the slot back. Yeah, exactly. He's basically a wide receiver coming out of that backfield. Stanford, 90% of the time, will go with the one-back offense, John Volpe. Columbus going again. Again, it's complete to Green, and Green is cut down at the 39. He did not get out of bounds. Tackle made by Marcus Turner. So Columbus, using medium range underneath stuff, has carried Stanford now down to the... 39-yard line of UCLA. Columbus looks good. He's not forcing anything. He's taking exactly what the secondary of UCLA will give him. Key block on that last play by John Volpe, allowing that pass to be completed. Walter Batson goes wide to the left side, along with the tight end who is in the slot, Jim Price. Columbus handing off to Volpe. And Volpe is brought down by Eric Smith. Eric Smith is a senior from Yorba Linda, went to Servite High School. 22-year-old senior, outside linebacker, Eric Smith. Talked about him missing a lot of the uh, preseason, or not preseason, but early in the season because of the concussion against Nebraska. Missed all of last season with a back injury, so he's getting a chance to play in these last few games, and he's making the most of it. Again, Batson goes wide to the left side, and the slot is Charlie Young, and now Price goes in motion. Price is the tight end. Columbus throwing a little slant in pattern to Green, who makes the catch. A catch right at the 30-yard line of UCLA. Darby was covering, but there was nothing that Darby could do. The pass was simply thrown too quickly right in front of him. Terry a little bit concerned right now. You can see that Stanford is uh, marching a nice drive. Remember now, the ball started on Stanford's own 18-yard line, so they've had possession for quite a bit, and they've moved downfield rather nicely. And now Stanford will go with two tight ends, Jim Price and Turner Bauer. Charlie Young is out. Lone running back is Volpe. Third down two at the 30 of UCLA. Volpe, or was he stacked up by Doug Klein? The senior from Armada, Colorado was right there with Volpe, and that was one of the rare instances where Volpe is one-on-one -on -one and the defender brings him down. The defensive alignment, they're allowed to, they're supposed to take a certain area, and I watch 48, he comes into his area that he's got to take on short yardage, and he just wraps Volpe up around the neck and just bulldogs him down. Excellent play by Doug Klein. Columbus is looking over at the Stanford bench. Remember, Stanford trails now, and that's the end of the first quarter. Whether they should go for it on fourth and two or try a field goal. We'll unravel all of that for you when we return with the second quarter from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. With the score UCLA 10 to nothing over Stanford, we're coming up to the first play of the second quarter. Mike Walden and Jack Snow with you along the Prime Ticket Network. And the decision has been made by Elway. He will go for it on fourth and two, not try a field goal. First quarter stats, 91 total yards for the Bruins, 67 for Stanford. No turnovers. And the first quarter simply flew by. Only 29 minutes to play the first period. Columbus throwing, and it is caught by Walter Batson. He is out of bounds at the 26-yard line. It's a first down for Stanford. So the Cardinal drive is still alive. I'll tell you, Mike, that's what I call having confidence in your quarterback to make that throw on a fourth and two. That's uh, a routine type throw, but a difficult throw, especially when Daryl Henley is covering that outside wide receiver, but an excellent job of running the route by Walter Batson. 
Jason Columbus is uh, opening a lot of eyes here in the Rose Bowl today. Look at those stats. Well, he must have heard me in the pregame when I said that uh, he has trouble starting the first half a little slow, and he uh, obviously is uh, throwing that back at me, and more, more credit to him. A first down for Stanford, the ball around the 26. Volpe is stringing him out, and Volpe is out of bounds. Arnell Lake who is almost as fast as Volpe, who is the fastest man on the Stanford team. But did you notice that Lake was matching him stride for stride? Well, Stanford running a little option right here. Columbus is going to come down the line of scrimmage and just a little pitch out, something you'll see the wishbone teams do, and he's got Volpe right there. Now watch 31 Carnell Lake come up. Volpe has a step on him, but Lake forces him wide to the outside and eventually runs him out of bounds with some help from Daryl Henley. A loss of four. Carnell Lake, by the way, is one of the finalists for... The Butkus Award, the outstanding linebacker in collegiate football. Second and 14, Columbus puts it up in the air, and it is intercepted by Eric Turner. Turner is out of bounds near the 30. There is something about Stanford that brings out the best in Eric Turner. Last year, Turner intercepted a pass and went for a touchdown against Stanford in the 49 to nothing romp by the Bruins. Bad choice here by Columbus, trying to force that ball into his outside receiver. Green, he can't do it. Eric Turner playing deep center field where he belongs. He's in the proper position at the right time. Makes the interception, brings it back upfield, takes away a nice drive from Stanford. Excellent play by Eric Turner. Turner had uh, two interceptions last week up at Eugene, Oregon in that 16-6 victory. Brian uh, Brown in the backfield along with Estwick, and it is Estwick, the ball carrier, getting maybe a yard or so. Stopped around the 30. You look at that Bruin offensive line, Cornish, Zeno, Manyfield, Page, and Keith Jacobson is in there now for UCLA. You see number nine right there, Mike Favre, break the huddle. He needs two receptions today to uh, re be the number one receiver for a single season. Let's see if he gets it. Hasn't got any yet. Present record is held by Flipper Anderson and Mike Sherrard. Second and six from the 31 of UCLA. Bruins on top. Ten to nine. Fumble by Brown. And who got there first? Stanford, the Cardinal. A recovery by Stanford's Chuck Robinson. Couldn't tell exactly what happened, but nice hustle on the part of the Cardinal defense. Chuck Robinson in particular will get a good, another shot of it. Looked like Brian Brown had control. It's just a straight handoff. He's going to take the ball and bounce to the outside. It looks like it's under control, but may have been stripped away by 43 in there who knocks the ball away. Rob Hinckley allowing Chuck Robinson to come in and recover. This would be a better shot right here. He's trying to hit into the line. It's all stacked up. Excellent job by Stanford. And then Rob Hinckley strips the ball away. Big 98, Chuck Robinson, the redshirt freshman linebacker, comes in and recovers for Stanford. Despite UCLA's 8-1 record, that turnover margin has been something that has driven Terry Donahue and Bruin fans right up the wall. Columbus off to Volpe, makes a low catch, and Volpe is brought down at the 25, 24-yard line. Jim Waller on the tackle. The Bruins have simply turned it over too much this year. It really hasn't cost them except for the Washington State game. Well, and that's one thing that concerns Terry Donahue, the plus-minus ratio of giveaways to takeaways. It's not as high as he would like it, and he's very, very upset about that. UCLA does a good job on third down, which a lot of people don't realize is so crucial, but in the giveaway takeaways, they've got to get more production from uh, the defense as far as interceptions and fumble recoveries and less giveaways in terms of interceptions and fumbles. A surprise, Brian Johnson is the quarterback for Stanford, and Johnson comes out throwing off the hands of Jim Price and almost intercepted. I don't know whether Columbus is hurt. I guess he would have to be after completing nine out of nine passes. Brian Johnson was the starter earlier this year through the first three games, and then Coach Elway decided to go with Columbus because he said Columbus is a little more consistent than Brian Johnson. Well, Brian Johnson, a very fiery type individual, as you watch that last play, he just zipped that ball into his tight end, Jim Price. If he takes something off of it, that's a completion. New running back for Stanford, Scott Eshelman, replaces John Volpe. Johnson pumping once. Look at the time. This one is intercepted by Marcus Turner. 
So Marcus Stender says to Eric, hey, buddy, anything you can do, I can do. The Turners are not related. This interception by Marcus Turner, his fifth interception this season. Brian Johnson with all the time in the world, he's going to look to his left. Now he comes back to his right. He really zips the ball in a little bit high. There was tight end Price over the top. Henley has it bounce off his shoulder pads. And here comes Marcus Turner just scooping it right up off the ground. Great individual effort by Marcus Turner. Looks like a John Shelby catch from center field. That's his fifth interception of the year. Leads UCLA with five interceptions this year. Heck of a job by Marcus Turner with First. an assist to Daryl Henley. First and 10 UCLA. The ball is at the UCLA three. The Bruins 10, Stanford nothing. And we have played exactly two minutes of the second quarter. Larry Thompson. We might have some discrepancy in the clock. We don't get through a game in the Rose Bowl without one of the clocks going awry. <laughs> You're being kind. You're being kind. Whatever it is, apparently has been corrected. That much time left in the first half. 10-0 UCLA over Stanford. I like a game like this. I, I you know, with a lot of turnovers. Heavy, I think it's very entertaining to watch. Heavy-duty company right there for Marcus Turner, James Washington, and Kenny Easley, two all-time greats. Brown doesn't get anything. Nailed by Barry McKeever, the inside Barry linebacker, the with some help there. from Engelhardt. And nothing UCLA. 41 Rick Bader, sophomore, or excuse me, senior free safety. Played a lot this year for Stanford. Father was the assistant coach up at Stanford. Then he wound up taking a head job at Cal. And I think eventually became the uh, athletic director at Cal, didn't he, Roger Bader? Maybe not. He was with the San Diego Chargers yeah, for a while assistant as an assistant coach, coach. there. Uh -huh. Roger Theater and his son Rick playing now for Stanford. He was also, Roger was also an assistant coach at Stanford. Aikman's pass is too tall for David Keating. Alan Grant on the coverage. Jack Snow, how do you assess Troy Aikman in the last two games? I think Troy Aikman's had some problems in the last couple of ball games. I don't think his confidence factor is where it was, let's say, in the third, fourth, and fifth game of the year, fifth games of the year. Some routine throws that he's normally been right on target, the, sh the uh, short outs and whatnot. He he's been used to zipping that ball. He'd been rather low, and he started out today in the same fashion, a couple of low throws. But he's a competitor. He'll bounce back. He's too good a quarterback. May run this. Now he unloads, and the pass is caught at the 15-yard line for... UCLA, the catch made by Brendan McCracken. Aikman is now four out of seven. I'll tell you what, no sooner do you say something that is not positive about a player, he comes back and bites you. That was just a very, very strong throw on the part of Troy Aikman. Brendan McCracken leaving the field, the next quarterback himself. A nice route run, and he made a nice catch and took a pounding. They spot the ball down at the 16. First down for the Bruins. It's homecoming game here on homecoming weekend. Hi, Mom. Send money. First and 10 at the 16. Here comes Brian Brown up close to the 20. A, a pickup of four yards by Brian Brown. Kevin Richardson in on the tackle for Stanford. Second and six for UCLA at the 20. Temperature about 73 degrees at kickoff time. Slight breeze out of the southeast at six miles an hour. But just great weather here in the Royal Seco. This place will be jam-packed next Saturday for SC UCLA. That game has been sold out since September. Brown around the left side is flipped down close to the 25. Kevin Scott got him, the right cornerback. On the tackle. It's going to be about a yard shy of a first down. Brown has carried 12 times for 53 yards. Good job by the offensive line for UCLA. We keep mentioning Joe Page and Lance Zeno, you know, Frank Cornish, Rick Meyer, and Bobby Menefield doing a heck of a job for the Bruins offensively against the down lineman for Stanford. Palm Bush, Huckstein, and Archambault having a little trouble controlling the offensive line for the Bruins. Third and two, everybody in tight. Thompson in motion. He's the zoom back. Brian Brown. And Brown trying to get that first down. I, he didn't get it. He's going to be about a yard shy. Just did get up to the 25. 
Fourth and down as the tackle is made by Barry McGeever. Nice job of filling the holes again by the Stanford Cardinal. A key situation, third and two, and uh, UCLA cannot come up with it. Harold Barkate, who has been averaging a little better than 42 yards a punt, will kick to Alan Grant. Grant led the nation in kickoff returns last year, but he hasn't been able to get loose so far this year. Grant from Pasadena, St. Francis High School. Ooh, it's almost blocked. Barkate just did get it away. Grant takes the ball at the 41. And when he was the first man downfield, the man who made the snap to Barkate. 34-yard punt by Barkate. Little over 10 minutes left here in the first half. 10-0 UCLA. First down, Stanford at the Stanford 42. The Cardinal trailing 10-0. Charlie, Charlie Young carry. Young coming around on the, the reverse. And Young just did get back to the line of scrimmage. Matt Darby would not be fooled on that one. And a yard on the play to the 43. 57-year-old Jack Elway. You know, he's had pretty good success against UCLA. He's 2-2 two and two versus the Bruins and 2-0 and oh at the Rose Bowl. So he's, uh, he's, I think he's happy to be here today. He's done very, very well against this UCLA team. I think Jack Elway's greatest success is producing John Elway. And his twin sister, Jana. Absolutely. Second and nine. Ball at the 43. Brian Johnson throwing. The Brian grab Johnson is made by Johnson. Green, Green, the wide receiver. Henry I still Green. haven't received any information regarding the status of Jason Columbus. I haven't either, and uh, I've been looking for him on the sidelines. I can't find him, but uh, he must have taken a pop earlier in the first quarter. Brian Johnson getting a chance to come back. Now, remember, he started the first four games for Stanford, so it's an opportunity for him to regain the starting spot here. Third down and four at the 48-yard line. The Stanford 48, 10-0 UCLA. Walter Batson wide to the left side, twice in the slot. Johnson throws to Batson up in the air, and it's grabbed off by UCLA's Matt Darby. Another intercepted pass. Twice the ball has been deflected, and twice UCLA coming up with the interception. Well, that ball's right on target. That ball should have been caught. Johnson throws it on the short out. Ball's going to pop high up off Walter Batson's hands. Goes way up in the air. Darby, 43, continuing his pursuit, comes in, makes a catch. Ball's trying to turn around and head back upfield. Nice job, though, by Matt Darby. Another good shot. Watch it go off Walter Batson's hands. He goes high up in the air, just pops right up through his, through his hands, off his helmet, and here comes Darby in hot pursuit. Makes a catch and then trips and goes down. Coming into this game, UCLA's defense had had only eight interceptions. They've already had three here in the first half. Aikman back to throw. He gets some heavy heat, but he completes the pass. Troy Aikman throwing downfield for a first down at the 46-yard line to Mike Farr. 14 yards on the pass play. Excellent execution between quarterback and receiver. He knows the, the pressure's coming. He stays in the pocket, fires that ball downfield. Far number nine comes back, makes a catch before he's wrapped up by Brad Cook. Mike Farr now with his first catches is 47 on the year. Wide receiver 5'10", 185-pound junior out of Birmingham, Michigan. First and 10 at the 46. Troy Aikman handing off to Sean Wills. Wills trying to twist away and is put down at the 39 by Rick Theater, the free safety of Stanford. Gain of seven by Sean Wills, the only true freshman that will play this season for UCLA. He's from Hanford, California. Wills is the number two rusher for UCLA. He has five touchdowns to his credit. Look at that average, 7.2. Outstanding. Second and two, UCLA. Maury Toy is the fullback. Wills, the tailback. Aikman. Flips it to Wills. Nice move, not once but twice by Sean Wills as he goes down to the 32, wrapped up by the cornerback, Kevin Scott. 
Talk about great athletic ability. He gets by Lester Archambault, the defensive end for Stanford. He's going to take the pitch again, the option from UCLA. Now watch this move right here. Whoop, right by Archambault. An excellent job. Picks up about seven, eight additional yards before he's finally tripped up by the cornerback, Kevin Scott. Now you know why Wills is averaging seven yards a carry. The first time he carries, seven yards. The second time, seven yards. Rolling that seven number. And it's been lucky so far for Wills. Aikman on a little quick out throw. Mike Farr is down to the 27-yard line. Another grab by Farr. That's his second today. Ball is not playing today because of a sprained ankle. Ball having a good year from a statistical standpoint. 781 yards, but you add in Wills and you factor in Brian Brown and the Bruins tailbacks. They have contributed almost 1,500 yards. Here's the end of round, and it is Berkeley carrying Lawrence Berkeley for UCLA. Berkeley down the sideline, cuts it at the five. Lawrence Berkeley is out of bounds at the two. 25 yards on the reverse. Lawrence Berkeley. Lawrence Berkeley, who has rushed one time before today for 17 yards. Now watch the key block by Aiken right there. Boom, he gets a nice block to allow Berkeley to get to the outside. Berkeley heading upfield, gets his couple of key blocks. It looks like he's going to score. He tries to cut back in, but good pursuit on the part of Rob Hinckley for the Stanford Cardinal does not allow him to score. Excellent job of running. First and goal, UCLA at the Stanford three. Thompson in motion. Sean Wills. Sean Wills. Sean Wills was tripped up just enough by Englehart, and Wills went down at the line of scrimmage, the three-yard line. Then Tony Michi finished him off. Second and goal at the three. Crowd of 70,000 anticipated. They didn't have 70,000 at the kickoff. A lot of people tailgating and having picnics and what have you, but... The bowl is really filling up. I would guess it is 70,000 plus, maybe even up to 72,000. Thompson coming in motion again. It is Estwick, the fullback, Mark plunging Estwick. into the middle. Stopped at the two. So the Bruins well, had a first and goal of the six. Now they're down there again, and they come up to a third and goal at the two as the tackle was made by Archambault and Hinckley. Rob Hinckley out of Walnut Creek, California. Headquarters for the Pac-10 Conference. 14 tackles and three sacks last week. They really like him. Dick Manini, the defensive coordinator for Stanford, says this youngster has definitely has a bright future. Wonder if Aikman might throw in this situation. Thompson in motion. Aikman wants to throw, and it is intercepted in the end zone. Brad Cook to the 30. 40, Cook cuts in at the 50, and Cook is still on his feet, down to the 34 of UCLA. Sean Wills made the tackle, a touchdown saving tackle by Sean Wills. 67 yards on the interception by Brad Cook. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, I'll tell you what, you get another look at this in the end zone. It's a little fake, a naked roll out to his right side. The pressure will come. He just throws that ball up in the air. He looks like he's going for Arbuckle right there, 81. Now watch Danny Thompson, 15, as he takes off after Brad Cook, who makes the interception. It looks like he's going to go all the way. There's Thompson, 15. Now Thompson knows he's cutting back. He gets a hand out there on him to slow him down before he loses it. Finally, unbelievable. Big play for Stanford. Volpe carries, and he's brought down by Roman Pfeiffer at about the 30-yard line. We have just received word now that Jason Columbus, uh, Jason Columbus was taken out of the game because of uh, the coach's decision. Well, that Jack Elway said, hey, he just threw an interception, so I'm going with somebody else. Although Columbus at one time was nine out of nine. Well, he threw a couple of passes close to the goal line that uh, maybe shouldn't have been thrown. A couple of them were very, very hard passes and he threw into coverage a couple of times and Elway's not going to waste any time he can't afford that young in motion the give is to the running back for Stanford John Volpe and Volpe is stopped at about the 24 ball is at the uh, 24 yard line UCLA 10 Stanford nothing just under five minutes left here in the first half 
Jim Price getting ready to come back in along with Bauer, a couple of tight ends, and now Elway has called him back. Johnson conferring with the bench. Brian Johnson from Skyline High School in Oakland has completed 53% of his passes this season. We measure for the first down. Ooh, that is close. Any part of that football, and they just got the nose. So it's Stanford by a nose with the first down at the 24. They don't want to let this opportunity get away, Mike. The last time they had the ball on the 24-yard line, they uh, had an opportunity to score and threw an interception. Now they come back and take over on the 34. They've got to score some points down here. Pinkley is wide to the right side. John Pinkley to the left is Batson. Volpe, the lone running back. Johnson throwing for Batson, and it went right through his hands. Walter Batson should have caught that pass. That's two passes that have gone through the hands of Walter Batson, and uh, Johnson, he's a little bit upset. He really put some zip on the ball. There's Walter Batson going uh, off to the sideline right now, and he knows he should have made that catch. Second down and 10 at the 24. UCLA 10, Stanford nothing. Bruins got a seven-yard touchdown run by Brian Brown and a 23-yard field goal by Velasco. Charlie Young in motion. Brian Johnson in trouble. Runs down the middle and gets back to the line of scrimmage. The 24. Dropped at the 24. Chance Johnson in there again for UCLA, doing an outstanding job from his inside linebacker spot. He had a great week last week against Oregon, did Chance Johnson. But again, good coverage in the secondary by the UCLA Bruins does not allow Brian Johnson to get that ball off, forcing him to run up the middle. There's Chance Johnson last week, 13 tackles against the Ducks. Leads UCLA with 85 this season, an outstanding football player. Ball is at the 24 of UCLA. And Stanford calls for a timeout. Three minutes, 44 seconds left in the first half, and the Bruins have a 10 to nothing advantage over the Cardinal from Stanford. College Football 88 is brought to you by Volkswagen, who invite you to see the Volkswagen Fox today at your local Volkswagen dealer. By Labatt's Blue, Canada's number one selling beer. It's blue heaven and by Great Western's family of companies with over $30 billion in assets. 100 years strong. We'll always be there. Not much time remaining here in the first half on this sunshiny afternoon in Pasadena. Pinkley goes wide to the right side for Stanford on a third and 10 at the 24. Now Price comes in motion. Johnson under heavy pressure, fires, it's complete to Walsh at the 10. And Chris Walsh is twisted down at the 6 by Marcus Turner. First and goal to go for Stanford at the UCLA 6. 18 yards on the pass play. Chris Walsh, the redshirt freshman, there he is right there, number 80. He's going to run a turning route, gets in behind Marcus Turner, waits for the ball, slides back, 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 makes a catch with his shoulder pads because of the balls that have gone through the hands of other receivers, turns it back upfield, picks up about three extra yards, and it puts Stanford in good field position. There he is right there, Chris Walsh out of Concord, California. Two running backs for Stanford, Tommy Vardell and John Volpe. And Stanford calls for another timeout with a first and goal to go at the UCLA 6. The Bruins tend to nothing, but the Cardinal down there knocking at the door. Stanford has a new left tackle on offense, Raleigh Coffin. He's been a starter most of the year, didn't start today due to a bad shoulder. Volpe and Bardell on the running backs, two tight ends for Stanford. Pinkney in motion. It is Volpe. Did he get in? No, he did not. Stop just that far away from the UCLA goal line. Dion Lambert put the hit on him. Well, that came very close to being a missed exchange between quarterback and receiver, and, uh, quarterback and running back, and also the touchdown. Look at that. Almost didn't come away from center with it. Now watch Volpe. Covers the ball up nicely. One, two, three, four. Bruins take a shot. And I'll tell you what, he is close. He can't get much closer before he scores. Stanford has recorded only five yards rushing here in the first half in 15 tries. 
Walsh wide to the right side. Quarterback Brian Johnson, touchdown Stanford. The old quarterback sneak. Stanford has been flirting with a score. Finally, they are able to turn it into a score on the quarterback sneak by Brian Johnson. Nothing fancy, just a straight quarterback sneak right up over the top. Again, going in behind his offensive All-American candidate center, Andy Sinclair, just takes the ball, pops up over the top. The ball crosses the plane, and that's a touchdown automatically. A little help there from Craig Davis to try and push his head off his shoulders. Here's the kick by John Hopkins, and it's right through. And we've got a 10-7 ball game here. Two and a half minutes left in the first half. UCLA 10, Stanford 7. We still have about two and a half minutes, a little over that, 2.37 left in the first half. Hopkins will kick off to either Brian Brown or Sean Wills. It's homecoming day, and a lot of the young parents bringing the kids out, getting them ready to celebrate homecoming about, what, 17 years down the road? I would say that young man is, what do you think, Jack, four, five months old? Yeah, four or five, and uh, I think you just had a haircut, don't you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, he sure did. Fell asleep in the chair, didn't he? <laughs> Hopkins kicking off to Brian Brown at the goal line. Brian Brown. Brown to the 20. Trying to get outside and twist away. Is put down at the 22. Rick Theater making the tackle. If UCLA had been able to capitalize on scoring opportunities. This could be a 24 to nothing game right now for the Bruins. That's right, and on that last uh, touchdown drive by the Cardinal, that's a 14-point swing because that ball was picked off in the end zone and run back 68 yards to the 34-yard line of UCLA, and Stanford Winley, or winds up going in for the touchdown. So a big, big turn of events for the Cardinal. Reggie Moore comes wide to the right side along with Mike Farr for UCLA. David Petey is split left. Aikman wants to throw once, now he dumps it off to Farr behind the line, up to the 22, and out of bounds around the 25, 24. Alan Grant running him out of bounds. It's rare when you see Farr catch a little swing pass behind the line. Well, they were trying to go with a uh, screen to the wide receiver. He is now the, look at that, 49th reception this season, which is a new UCLA single season record, Mike Farr. Yet to score a touchdown this year, but he does have the single season reception, re reception record. The old record held jointly by Willie Flipper Anderson and Mike Sherrard. Second and nine for the Bruins at the 24. Aikman, ooh, he just caught the arm forward and he got the pass and it's an incompleted forward pass, but he just did start his forward motion. The heat was put on by Chuck Robinson, the linebacker. Well, he got smacked from the blind side. I don't think Troy ever really realized where the rush was coming from. He's going to drop back. He's looking over here to his right side, and in comes 98. Chuck Robinson and really smacks him. That ball bounces up in the air, but his forward motion was going, so it's an incompleted pass. Third down nine at the 24. There he is. There's Robinson, 98. Big one, 6'2", 245 pounder, and he is a redshirt freshman and a linebacker. 11 of the 24 Stanford starters are either redshirt freshmen or sophomores. So this is a team to be reckoned with in the years to come. And Aikman goes down again, hit by Rob Hinkley. I mean, Hinkley had a straight pass coming right in on Aikman. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, that's dangerous because, boy, oh, boy, you get a clear shot like Rob Hinkley had. Well, Aikman has taken two shots right in a row. It's the old torpedo shot. And Aikman has a sense. He can feel, I think, right here. He can feel Hinkley. Maybe he doesn't see it, but holy smoke. I'll tell you what. He may not have felt him on the rush, but he felt him when he went down to the ground. He's going to have to go in. There's Rob Hinkley, 245-pound junior linebacker out of Walnut Creek. Fourth and 16, and Barkate is back to punt. Remember the last time Barkate had to punt, he almost had it blocked. We have a timeout with two minutes to play in the first half, and Hinkman and Hinkley is celebrating on the Stanford sidelines. Aikman is really an aching man over on the UCLA sidelines after taking first a hit from Robinson and then one from Hinkley. And Barkate will now be ready to punt. Alan Grant dropping back deep for Stanford. 
John Winnick to make the snap. A little high, but Markgate doesn't get any pressure from Stanford. Grant at the 39. Retreats a yard or so. Back up field. And meant head on at the 45 and dropped. 44 yards on the punt, a six-yard return. But Stanford will have the ball with a first down at the 45. The tackle made by Brendan McCracken on Allen Grant. Stanford in decent field position to move that ball down the field. The one thing they do not have right here, they do not have any more timeouts. I don't believe, I think they're all out of their timeouts. So whatever they do, they're gonna have to push that ball up the field throw the medium range passes and get out of bounds immediately UC plenty of time though UCLA Mike. on the other hand three remaining timeouts 149 left in the first half 10 7 UCLA here is the John delay Volpe carrying Volpe gets a yard maybe two they will mark his forward progress at the 47 it's second down and eight Argo making the tackle Stacy Argo John Volpe has 12 carries today for 24 yards. And Johnson throws complete. Green's got it. And Green is out of bounds around the 41-yard line. Marcus Turner covering for UCLA. It was a nice job by Brian Johnson of checking off. He wanted to come to his left side. He found his receiver covered, immediately went back across the field to his alternate and hit Henry Green. First down. Johnson, you know, is quite a baseball player. He's an outfielder on the Stanford baseball team. And when he was in high school, he once hit two Grand Slam home runs in one inning. One inning. He's trying to go for a Grand Slam right here to Price. The 20. Price down to the 15. Jim Price, who is an imposing target at 6'4 and 240. And the senior tight end made the grab and then did something with the ball. Is Finally, he, it was Klein who made the tackle. Is he smooth, he being Jim Price, on a nice throw from Johnson. They're in their two-minute offense. they got to keep things rolling. A nice job of Jim Price of running after he made the catch. Ball is just outside the 15 as Johnson running and throwing the ball away, actually, because Walsh had no chance to make the reception. He just threw it away. That stops the clock with 103 left. Second and 10 at the 15. Winding down this first half of UCLA's homecoming game against the Cardinal from Stanford. Eshelman is the new running back now for the Cardinal. He will replace Volpe and the Stanford Redcoat Band getting ready to perform. And of course, they're always such a disciplined unit, always in uniform. Surely you jest. Uh, yes, indeed I do. <laughs> Second and 10 at the 15, the free-spirited man. And here comes another free-spirit, Johnson, throwing in heavy traffic for Walsh, and a penalty marker goes down. Yeah, rightfully so. There's going to be a flag, and it may be against Eric Smith, the outside linebacker, going for Walsh on a quick slant over the middle. Terry wants a timeout. Or he says a tip ball. I thought he was signaling timeout at first. We'll get the call from Thompson. Watch the Johnson pass now. He's going for Chris Walsh, number 80. Let's see if 98 get. Yeah, there's no question of that. That ball was uh, definitely smacked. He was smacked, he being the receiver, Chris Walsh, by 98. That man right there, Eric Smith. Eric had his back to the quarterback, could not see what was going on, and Terry Downey was a little bit upset because he knows what's going to happen here or what could happen. And it ain't good. No, because Stanford now will have the ball at the UCLA five-yard line, first and goal to go. That's a good shot, guys, because you can see it, obviously, Eric Smith just pushes him in the back. There's no question of a good call by the officials, an obvious call. Henry Green and Charlie Young wide to the right side. Price is the tight end. Quick pass to Price. Touchdown, Stanford. Stanford had three receivers to the right, two deep, and the tight end Price, and they went to Price slanting in for the score. Stanford has won the last two times they have played UCLA here in the Rose Bowl, and they take the lead near the end of this half. Jim Price, the tight end, will line up on the outside. It looks like a little run and shoot that Arizona uses, but Johnson does a good job of coming up with the snap and just getting that ball to Price right now. There he is, Jim Price, 6'4", 240 pounder out of Pine Brook, New Jersey. And the extra point attempt by Hopkins is right through. 
And with 55 seconds left in the first half, Price will take a breather, but he's a very happy young man due to the fact that his catch has enabled Stanford to take the lead over Terry Donahue and UCLA, 14 to 10. Stanford doing a nice job of moving down the field with no timeouts to get that uh, ball into the end zone. A heck of a job by Brian Johnson, the quarterback. Good play selection on the part of the head coach, Jack Elway. A lot of Stanford fans here today. And they're very happy right now with a 14 to 10 lead. Tuesday, the Los Angeles Kings host the Vancouver Canucks in the third game of a five game homestand. For great hockey action, join us Tuesday live at 715 only on prime ticket sports television at its best. Amazing isn't it that in this series and it's been a relatively even series UCLA having the upper hand with 31 victories 24 by Stanford three ties but the oddity is that the visiting team has won the last five games. A lot of people might think that uh, Stanford has a definite or is UCLA has a definite uh, dominating factor over the Stanford Cardinal but if you go back the last 11 years UCLA has won six of those games and Stanford has won five so they're pretty even the last uh, 12 years or so. Hopkins kickoff is taken four yards deep by Brian Brown the touchback will bring it up to the 20 and a first down for UCLA with 55 seconds left in the first half. And everybody in the stands here today, I'm sure, saying to themselves, what's wrong with number eight, Troy Aikman? Well, I don't know. We talked about it a little bit, uh, you know, a couple of his passes have been a little bit low, but uh, being the competitor he is, he'll make the adjustments and he'll have to come back. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what UCLA does right here. They've got 55 seconds to go. They have all three of their timeouts left. If they go for a big play on this first down, you'll know they'll try to get it into the end zone and try and get a score before half. Keating is wide to the right side, and the slot to the right is Mike Farr. Reggie Moore is split left. It is Sean Wills. Wills picks up three, and the Boo Birds are out now. They wanted to see Aikman go long and deep, and they got Wills instead for three yards. I don't know if I disagree with them either. I mean, you've got plenty of time. You've got a big, strong arm quarterback. You've got receivers who can catch the football. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. Although, remember that UCLA will come out to start the third quarter with the football. Our buckle is the tight end. Mike Farr to the right side. Moore to the left. On second and seven from the 23, the pitch goes again to the tailback. This is Wills looking for some running room, and he gets up to the 26. And now the boos become even louder. And the Stanford players along the sideline urging the crowd to make it even more volume. <laughs> well, that's it for the first half. And UCLA not used to this being down at the half and not used to the reception they're getting from their own fans here, or at least some of them here at the Rose Bowl. The halftime score, Stanford 14, UCLA 10. Mike Walden and Jack Snow, welcome back to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. Stanford leading 14 to 10 as we get ready to start play in the second half of this UCLA homecoming game. The Bruins jumped out to a 10 to nothing lead, and here is how they got their touchdown. Brian Brown on a seven yard run. Does a nice job of covering up, plows through a couple of these Stanford Cardinal defenders, goes into the end zone to put UCLA up 10 to nothing. But here's a key play for the Stanford Cardinal. Brad Cook, the cornerback for the Cardinal, off a of Troy Aikman pass, overshoots Arbuckle. Cook steps up in front, makes the interception. Now he's off to the races. And he's going to get that ball all the way back down to the 34-yard line of UCLA. Put, put them in very, very good field position, and the Cardinal will definitely take it in. A key play for the Stanford Cardinal in the first half. Here's a one-yard quarterback sneak by the quarterback, Brian Johnson. Just goes up over the top of the center, Andy Sinclair, and touchdown for the Cardinals brings them within three, 10 to seven. And then Stanford closes out, scoring in the first half on this five-yard pass to his tight end, Jim Price. Price catches it on the two, fights into the end zone. Stanford takes the lead after the conversion was good, 14 to 10, Stanford at the half. 
So the halftime statistics reveal that UCLA is 170 total yards to 146 for Stanford. Time of possession almost even, but a lot of turnovers in the first half. Three by Stanford and two by UCLA. Stanford up 14 to 10 over the Bruins. And if UCLA doesn't come from behind in this half and win the game, then forget about SC and UCLA because SC would be in the Rose Bowl and UCLA, from all purposes, would be headed for the Cotton Bowl in Dallas on the 2nd of January. The kickoff will be fielded by Wills. He is up to the 15. Wills straight up field. Nice return to the 35-yard line. The tackle on uh, Wills made by Pat Kelly. We get word now that Brian Lang, the starting uh, outside linebacker on the right side went out with a broken thumb on the first play of the game today so Brad uh, Bruce Lang is out and Chuck Robinson has been filling his post very capably good completion percentage for Aikman not a lot of yards and that one interception very key at the in the uh, first half with the ball at the 30 Aikman hands off and here is a big hole for the UCLA tailback Brian Brown and Brown goes to the 39, a pickup of nine. Mike, what UCLA has got to do this second half, they've got to come out and they've got to explode offensively as well as defensively. They cannot play like they're trying not to lose rather than playing to win. They've got to come out, turn all the cylinders loose, and go after this Stanford Cardinal team and, and basically try and bury them. They have got to do that. Now, Stanford has been in a lot of close conference games but they've come up empty most of the time as the 1-4-1 one one record would indicate in league play. Picked up the first down. First down for UCLA on the carry by Brown. The tackle made by Chuck Robinson. Stanford, on the other hand, from a defensive standpoint, they've got to try and shut down this UCLA running game. It has not been a real successful running game with only 98 yards in that first half. And uh, if they can shut him down, force Aiken to go to the air, he has not been extremely successful today so far in terms of long yardage passes. McCracken, wide right, tight end is Arbuckle. Aikman fires this pass too high for Reggie Moore. Reggie Moore is five feet, nine inches tall, and the pass was a couple of inches over his body. Yeah, they had that play. Aikman should have gotten that ball to Reggie Moore. The inside safety, Mike Newton, was late in coming over and covering his assignments, but Troy's got to make that uh, make that hookup with his outside people. Far to the right, Keating to the left. Second and ten for UCLA at the 44-yard line. Aikman across the middle, and this pass is low and dropped by Arbuckle. And Aikman is concerned and disappointed with the, the way he's been throwing the ball. He hasn't been sharp at all. No, he has not. And that's about the fourth pass today where that ball was has been low when it should not be. It should be right in the receiver's shoulder pads, allowing him right there in the numbers, allowing him to make an easy completion or reception. But uh, so far, Aikman's struggling a little bit. On third and 10 at the 44, Stanford will get another defensive back in there. Brad Cook. Four defensive backs anticipating a Troy Aikman pass. Far zigzagging back and forth. Aikman gets rid of the ball, but he skips on the first hop to Reggie Moore. And we are not seeing a vintage Troy Aikman. Certainly not the Troy Aikman that we saw against Nebraska and uh, against California. Again, good coverage and good pressure coming from the outside for the Stanford Cardinal. You'll see Rob Hinckley coming over 43 from the outside. Excellent job of stepping up into the pocket, but he's throwing off balance, and that's the reason for the low throw. Just not good form execution by that guy right there, Troy Aikman. And he knows it. Barcade is in punt formation. Alan Grant is deep for Stanford. Winnick making the snap. A little bit high. Oh, Barcade's going to run with the ball. Now he punts it, and it's blocked. It's blocked by Mike Newton.
Barkate took a high snap from John Winnick and started to peel off as though he would run with the ball. Then he decided to, I think maybe he could have uh, maybe picked up the first, yard, uh, first down around the right side. But it was blocked by Mike Newton. Let's check the snap. Yes, it's a little bit high. He could get the ball off. He'll pull it down, and he'll try to run for the first down. He thought he saw an opening. Now he realizes he's in trouble. Newton comes in there and knocks it away. And now it's a free ball. I'll tell you what, uh, first and 10 on the 20-yard line of UCLA. Not only is it blocked by Newton, but it's Newton who makes the recovery. And Stanford with the first and 10 from the UCLA 20. It's Volpe slammed down right at the line of scrimmage. The 20 by Jim Waller, the nose guard. So now it'll be up to the UCLA defense trying to stave off Stanford. The Cardinal, 14, UCLA 10. That's Anthony Burnett, a defensive back, talking to Troy uh, Donahue, or rather to Terry Donahue. And they're going over what happened on that punt block right there. There's a man inside, there's a man outside. You've got certain responsibilities. When he stacked over the coach, when he stacked over, then that's what he's going over with him. Brian Johnson winds up and fires this pass over the head of Price and almost intercepted. Darby almost came up with that ball for UCLA. The Bruins have had three interceptions in the game. Jim Price, 87, you see him the right of your screen. Now, Darby's got good position on the ball's a little bit high. He tries to go up with one hand and get it. It looks like Darby's going to come down and make the interception and go off to the races, but Matt Darby just cannot control the football. Jack Snow, we've seen so many deflected, tipped passes in this game. Well, it's been a sloppy type game from that standpoint, Mike. I mean, balls that should be right on the target are not. Catches that should be made, they're not being made. 14-10, Stanford, early in the third quarter. We played only a about three minutes. Johnson gets rid of it and completes the pass. Parnell Lake makes the tackle. So again, the UCLA defense rising to the occasion. And that'll set up a fourth and ten for Stanford, the ball at the 20. Well, they're talking some trash now. They're trying to get it going. This is just a screen pass to the right side. Get a good block over here from John Zenter, the right tackle, number 73 for UCLA. Tight end screen. But excellent pursuit on the part of Carnell Lake, who comes all the way across field to slam him down, no game. This will be a 38-yard field goal attempt, well within the range of John Hopkins. And he puts it through. 38 yards on the field goal by Hopkins. And Stanford leads 17-10 over the Bruins. Little over 12 minutes to be played here in the third period. College Football 88 is brought to you by Great Western's family of companies with over $30 billion in assets. 100 years strong. We'll always be there. And by your Southern California Chevrolet dealers who offer the Chevy Camaro RS with enough savings to let you drive out the door for under $10,500. And by Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. So much is riding on this game for that man, Terry Donahue, and for UCLA. If the Bruins don't beat Stanford, then they're out of the Rose Bowl. They still have to play SC next Saturday here in the Rose Bowl, but they're out of the running for the Rose Bowl, the Pac-10 champion versus the Big Ten champion January 2nd. And it could be if they don't win this game, then UCLA will wind up in the Cotton Bowl on January the 2nd in Dallas. It's the Southwest Conference champion, Arkansas. Well, Brown was going to and decided against it. And it was a wise decision by Brian Brown. So the challenge has been put right to Troy Aikman and UCLA by Stanford. Bruins down 17 to 10, but early here in the third quarter. And Aikman trying to rally the troops. Troy Aikman will have in his backfield. Brian Brown is the tailback, and Maury Toy is the fullback. First and ten from the 20. It is Brown. Brian Brown. Brown up to the 30, and I think he'll mark his forward progress to the 31. They will. First down, UCLA. Brown brought down by Rob Hinckley. 
Good hard, hard running again by Brian Brown. Right up the gut. This will be a good shot right here. Watch him come right up. Gets a good block from Maury Toy. Takes down McKeever. Keeps those feet moving right down the shoe. Excellent job before he's finally brought down by Rob Hinckley. Play looks similar to the one where Brown went 68 yards against the Oregon Ducks last week in Eugene. First and 10 at the 31. Again, into the middle goes Brown, and Brown is good as he gets up to the 39, close to the 40. Robinson, the linebacker, brought him down. 17 carries for 88 yards and a touchdown. Having a good day so far as Brian Brown, and we talked about it in the pregame show. He has got to have a good day on the ground, which in turn will allow that passing game to be so more effective. Brown doing his part. But the passing game not doing its part. Second and one, the ball at the 40. 17-10 Stanford. Brown trying to cut back in and loses a yard. Just as he was making his cut, he lost his footing, and then Rob Hinckley was right on top of him. Yep, out. Third down and two at the 39. A little look of uh, concern. Yes. Deep concern. In Troy Aikman's last five passing attempts, one completion for two yards, one interception. David Keating, wide right. Far and more wide left. Aikman is in deep trouble, and he is sacked by Rob Hinckley. That's the ninth quarterback sack this season by the 6'5", 245-pound junior from Walnut Creek, California. His second shot against Aikman, he makes the most of both of them. He fights off the block. He gets number 79. Lanzino gets around him and takes Aikman down, grabs him by that leg, and he says, son, make a wish, because you're going down. Grant is awaiting the punt now by Harold Barkate. You can see the concern on Aikman's face as well. Winnick makes the snap and Barkate gets it away. Penalty marker is dropped as Barkate goes down. It could be roughing the putter. We'll see. And Grant watches the ball flop around and go dead at about the 27. 40 yards on the punt, but we will check. Yep, it is a penalty against running into the punter. You be the judge now. Remember, he's exposed totally right now. He's way up in the air. He comes down and he is smacked. It looked like 92 got him. That would be Mark Hansen. It's a good call by the officials. A punter totally unprotected. After he makes contact with that football, you've got to give him some protection. You can't take a shot at him. Look at Jack Elway. As if to say, my goodness, we've been close in so many games. We're losing games by, you know, they've lost four conference games, Stanford, by three points, three points, four points, and four points. A total of 14 points, four losses for Stanford. Well, that guy right there, he feels the worst of anybody on the football field, but he was kind of between the rock and the hard spot. He didn't have control of his body, and he just fell right into the kicker. We have 9.44 left in this third period. First and 10, UCLA, the ball at the 48. The UCLA 48. Stanford 17 to nothing. More to the left, far to the right. The tailback, Brian Brown. Play action fake. Aikman going long and deep for Reggie Moore. He has it at the 50, or rather the 25. Out of bounds at the 25-yard line. And that looked like the Troy Aikman of the last fell early in October and in September. We talked about the receivers for UCLA being aligned in a man-to-man -man situation early in the ball game. They get it on this down. Reggie Moore in the slot will be running a corner route. He'll be running against Brad Cook, 18, but a nice lead pass by Troy Aikman. Watch him stretch out there, catch that ball right on the fingertips. Nice, beautiful catch by Reggie Moore. 27 yards on the play. Aikman to Reggie Moore. First and 10, UCLA at the Stanford 25. Estwick into the middle, and the fullback bucks his way to the 20. A pickup of five by the sophomore from La Quinata. Michi making the hit along with Rob Engelhart. Second and five, Bruins at the 20. Stanford leading 17 to 10. And we've got a timeout. Stanford player is down. 9.08 left in the third quarter. 
Stanford leading by seven, but the Bruins with an opportunity to tie it up. That's Barry McKeever being assisted off of the field. He had uh, knee surgery on his right knee, oh, about a year and a half ago, and it could be that's the area where the injury occurred. All right, the Bruins with the first down, the ball at the 25 of uh, Stanford. Brian Brown. Or rather, at the 20-yard line of Stanford, it's second down. And Richardson makes the tackle, the inside uh, linebacker for Stanford making the hit. Brown. By the loss. No, let's see where they're going to mark the ball. They're going to mark it down inside the 20. So about the 19, a pickup of uh, one. Third down and four, UCLA. 19-yard line of Stanford. Talk about a big third down play. This is one of them, certainly. 8.27 left in the third quarter. Troy Aikman ready to unload. He may run it. He runs it to the 15, and he's out of bounds at the 11. First down, UCLA. I think it's Jeff. Yeah, he did. He got it just barely to A nice job of running by Aikman. He wanted to go again. He wanted to go to Reggie Moore, his receiver on a corner out. He was going to roll out to his right side. He's looking for Moore all the way. Moore's running a corner, but good coverage by Stanford, so he just touched it away. Now he's off to the races and gets just boom, right past that orange pylon about a yard. First down, UCLA. The Bruins will operate with the lone running back, Brian Brown. First and 10, the ball at the 11. Brown. Brian Brown. Stopped at the 11 and a penalty marker drop. Kevin Richardson making the hit. Kevin Richardson in on the tackle. We may have a hold in there. Normally when that flag is thrown in that area, you get an offensive holding call or a, a face mask penalty, but I didn't see any face masks, but let's wait and see what happens. Terry Donahue eagerly awaiting the outcome of the decision, too. So is Elway, Jack Elway. Holding against the offense, still first down. Holding against the Bruins. Well, that's something that you, you don't want to see happen. You just, you know, you hate to have that happen down there. It's going to push you back another 10 yards. It's going to give you more field to operate in. But Donnie, who doesn't want that right now, he says, I want that ball first down on the 11-yard line, and I'm not going to get it. i got to go come clear back here about to the 21 now. Jack Snow, you've said so many times, read the eyes of the players. Were you able to read the eyes of Sean Wills back of Terry Donahue on that last shot? No, I was looking at Terry. I was reading oh, yeah. his eyes, and uh, he's a little concerned, but there's some guy's eyes. That guy right there, read his eyes. He's still, uh, you never can tell. He just, you know, he's always got the same expression on his face, but he's a little bit worried right now. He he knows what he has got to do. He's got to take this offense and put, it, put that ball in the end zone. Things were going so merrily for UCLA and Troy Aikman up until two weeks ago. Bruins had a 27-6 lead over Washington State. Cougars won it 34-30, and it's been a struggle ever since. That Washington State defeat may have taken more out of the Bruins than people realized at the time. Aikman just does get rid of the ball, and a great catch made by Mark Esquick. Aikman was about to go down. Feeling the heat, he just did get rid of it, and Esquay made an outstanding reception. He does a good job of getting the ball away. He gets a lot of pressure. Again, 43, Rob Hinkin coming in, and I think 53, Ray Huckstein is in there also. A nice job to get the ball away. A great catch by 22, the fullback, Mark Estwick. Only five or four catches coming into today's game. That has to be his best catch all year. Second and 16, the ball at the Stanford 17-yard line. Stanford 17-10 over UCLA. Troy Aikman may try to run with the ball. He can't go. You know why? There is number 43 right in his numbers. Rob Hinkley. Hinkley had 14 tackles against Washington State last week in the loss. He's averaging nine tackles per game, and he's having an All-America-type game here against UCLA. Comes on the inside there and just takes him down. Nice job by the young outside linebacker, Rob Hinckley. Loss of four, third down and two. Unusual stat, normal four st uh, sacks by Stanford, two by UCLA. Aikman was sacked four times last week at Oregon, although the Bruins won 16-6. Aikman sets up the throw, and this one is on the first hop to Keating. 
you don't see Aikman throwing on so low and on the hop as much as you have today. Well, I, tell you, I just wonder if maybe his shoulder may be bothering him. There's no question that there's something bothering him. It may be a tired shoulder. He may have a little problem with it. I don't know, but we haven't seen him throw. The last, every, every couple of uh, throws in the last two or three games, he has done that, but he's responded well, and he's just... I don't know. It's just something about him and his throws and those outs. He looks great one time, the next time not so great. A field goal attempt of 38 yards by Alfredo Velasco, who is uh, almost perfect from that distance. He's 27 out of 28 inside 44 yards, and he puts this one home. The Bruins get three, but not the seven they thought they might get. 6.23 to go in the third quarter. The Bruins trail by four. 17-13 Stanford. A couple of times today, the Bruins have been out down there with a chance to get a touchdown, but they had to settle for the field goal instead. I think I made the comment earlier that at one time, had everything gone UCLA's way, it could have been a 24 to nothing lead, and it was a 10-3 lead for UCLA at that time. So they have frittered away some scoring opportunities rather than getting the touchdown, only the field goal. Maggio, Kurt Maggio to kick off to either Kevin Scott or Alan Grant. It's Scott. Kevin Scott. Oh, Scott is stacked up and then a lot of help puts him all the way back to the 20-yard line. The initial contact was made by Brian Lockwood. That's twice today. Lockwood has been the first man downfield for the UCLA special teams. That's a that's a stat that really startles you. When you think of Stanford, and all of the great quarterbacks that Stanford has had over the years, only nine yards passing in this game. Unbelievable, unbelievable. I think that was, was that a rushing or was that passing stat? Was that, I'm sorry, I, I thought it was uh, passing, but it was rushing. That's unbelievable as well. And so is that. Lodish on Johnson, Mike Lodish. Mike Lodi is coming from his left defensive end position. He's running in, and Johnson is rolling out exactly in Lodish's path. Lodish is there. It doesn't seem as if anybody touched him. He comes in, makes a nice job. Five sacks this season, and two today, and that one very, very important. The ball is back at the 15, and now the UCLA crowd getting behind the Bruins, giving the defense the ovation and some motivation. Batson has the ball, out of bounds around the 25. Walter Batson, the sophomore wide receiver. Darby putting him out of bounds. A simple hitch pass to Walter Batson, not a bad play to come back with. You lose uh, 10 yards on the quarterback sack. Let's pick some of it back up with just a little simple hitch pass from quarterback Brian Johnson to Walter Batson. You see number 10, that's the third string quarterback, Greg Ennis who was signaling in the play from the sidelines. Ennis was a starter at the beginning of last season for Stanford. Third and nine at the 25. Johnson almost falls down. Oh, he's stripped to the ball. It's Mike Lodish. Touchdown, Mike Lodish. Defensive down lineman's dream to score a touchdown. Mike Lodish has had his dream answered here today. Two, two big plays back to back by Mike Lodish. Brian Johnson going back to pass. Now watch that football. He stumbles a little bit. Getting set up to throw the ball. Here comes Lodish. The heck with the tackle. Give me that football. He just pops it in the air and takes off. And he's off to the race. Look at him rumble. Touchdown. He can feel it. He knows it. Yes, sir. to hold Velasco to attack on the extra point. Page makes the snap. Good. 
So Lodish, who taps the ball away from Brian Johnson and then goes 15 yards for the touchdown, and the Bruins take a 20-17 lead over Stanford. And Brian Johnson is trying to explain it over on the sidelines in front of the Stanford bench. <laughs> he, he's as shocked as anybody. He's saying, well, it was here in my hand, and then all of a sudden, Coach, it was gone. This would be a good shot right here. Now watch the football. Again, Johnson stumbles coming out. Here comes Lodis, 94. Gets that head up, knocks the ball up in the air, and he says, whoa, I'm just going to make this right here. And that is an interception, by the way. I believe it is. And off to the races, 15 yards, touchdown for UCLA. And his wildest dreams, Mike Lodish never felt that it would ever happen to him, but it has here today with 5.22 to go in the third quarter. A 15-yard touchdown for Mike Lodish. And the crowd getting behind the UCLA defense, I really believe they motivated that UCLA defense. And then Lodish really gave them something to cheer about. Lodish having a big day for UCLA. Not only the touchdown run, but he's been able to sack the quarterback today for Stanford. A couple of key sacks. And maybe that's not an interception. That might be a fumble recovery in the air for the touchdown. That may be how they actually technically record that. Maggio's kickoff goes straight up in the air. And down on one knee, making the grab, is Stanford's Tony Mishi, a linebacker. He wasn't about to run with that ball. I mean, not about to. I think Mishi thought he was in the end zone because he went right down to a knee when he made the catch. And listen to the crowd now trying to bolster this UCLA defense. Well, it worked once before. Let's see what happens now. First and 10 Stanford. The ball is at the Stanford 19-yard line. And the quarterback is still Brian Johnson. We haven't seen Columbus since the first half. Volpe slips one tackle, but down he goes. He just did get back to the line of scrimmage. Daryl Henley. The crowd upset with the UCLA offense near the end of the first half and venting their dissatisfaction with some boos and now responding with a positive note to the UCLA defense and the defense then responding. We've got Chris Walsh for Stanford coming off to the sideline. I think it's Chris Walsh, one of the receivers. Yeah, there he is, number 80. It kind of got uh, dinged a little bit, got up by himself, though, and he's jogging off to the sideline. He should be okay. We'll probably see him later in the game. Coming into this game, John Volpe needed just 56 yards to hit 1,000 yards this season. Volpe so far today has 25 in 14 carries. When Volpe does hit 1,000, he would become only the fourth back to do it in Stanford history. Check it, the third back. Nelson did it three times. Darren Nelson, Brad Muster once. Price in motion to Charlie Young. Young making the grab in traffic, and Young gets a first down up to the 31. 14 yards on the pass play. The tackle made by Eric Turner. Eric Turner on the tackle. It's a nice route run by that guy right there, Charlie Young. A little swing out of the backfield. He read the seam between the linebackers, popped inside. Brian Johnson shot him the ball. Nice catch, picks up a first down for the Cardinal. Henry Green to the right side. Walter Batson to the left for Brian Johnson. Lone running back is John Volpe. Young moves out. Johnson got a clear path up the sidelines. Now he releases it. Is it intercepted by Argo? Stacy Argo has the ball, and they ruled that he caught the ball inbound, so it is an interception. The key here is watch the receiver come back to meet his quarterback, Brian Johnson, and then Stacey Argo, who's going in pursuit. There's Green, the receiver. He should have made that catch. Are both feet in bounds? One? Well, he only has to have one. That's right. That's right. In college ball. Well, I'm so used to having both feet in bounds. I know. You need two in high school, one in college, and two in the pros. But a nice job. By the redshirt freshman, Stacey Argo. And look at this. The fullback, Mark Estwick. 
slamming his way down to the 36. And all of a sudden, this is a UCLA team on fire. Well, Elway can see it. Coach Elway can see it kind of slipping away. And that is not Brian Johnson's fault. As you look at him right there, number five, takes a pat from Ennis saying, hey, not your fault. And it isn't, but that uh, doesn't make any difference. UCLA in good field position. Five turnovers by Stanford. UCLA is committed to two. It's Brian Brown, and he is stopped by Tony Michi. Michi is a redshirt freshman from New Philadelphia, Ohio. Third down and about two. The ball will be marked at the 37. Brand, uh, Brendan McCracken goes out along with uh, Richardson, Paul Richardson. Mike Farr, wide right. Keating is wide to the left. Estwick and Brown out of the I formation. Play action. Aikman going long and deep to Keating, and it is dropped. David Keating had the ball pop out of his hands, but he was well covered by Brad Cook. And it was Cook that made the interception in the end zone and rambled 67 yards to set up a Stanford touchdown. Going to bring up fourth and a long two right here for UCLA. He'll get another shot. Good coverage by Brad Cook on David Keating. Cook had it going down. He gets his hands up in the air. And I think Cook just got a, his left hand and just did flick it away from David Keating. There he is. Nice job by the youngster, Brad Cook. Will this be a good time to go to Arbuckle, the tight end? Fourth and two. The ball at the 36. Estwick is the fullback and looks back at uh, Brian Brown. Aikman's going to rumble the ball. And if he got it, he just did get it. Aikman is six feet four inches tall and he stretched out that frame of his at about the 33 and if they mark it at the 33 it would be indeed a first down for UCLA. Very close Larry to first down. Thompson Five says it's so close I'm going to have to bring in the crew to measure. UCLA running with both backs in the I formation. Here's the option. Aikman can't give it up. He doesn't want to pitch it. Let's see you be the judge. He crosses it. I would say that he got it. It looks pretty good like he picked up the first down but again it depends on the spot of the ball by the official. Ball looks like it's a little bit closer to the 34 than it is the 33 from this vantage point. So close that Elway's got to check the position of his cap. Haven't even brought in the change yet. Now they do. I think the crowd will let you know how this one turns out. Did not get it. Did not by an inch or less. First and 10 for Stanford. The ball close to the 34. UCLA 20 to 17 over Stanford. Three minutes, 15 seconds left in the third quarter. Young in motion. Brian Johnson, the quarterback, fires out here to Batson, and Batson is twisted out of bounds by Eric Smith. Walter Batson. We're working on that side where Daryl Henley, number two, is, and Batson again with that just simple seven, eight yard hitch pattern. Pushes off, goes downfield, and uh, Brian Johnson steps back and fires that football. Nine of 16, 96 yards, one TD, but three INTs. And we haven't seen Jason Columbus since the first half. And at one time, Columbus was nine out of nine. Johnson being chased by Lodish. Brian Johnson completes it to John Pinky. And Pinkney was out of bounds just as soon as he made the grab. Daryl Henley Darryl right on Henley. him. Again, Brian Johnson getting some rush. Watch him wish away that right hand. No, whoosh, just get away from me. Now watch Pinkney come back and make a nice catch. Keep both those feet in bounds. He only needs one, but both of them in bounds. Nice job by number six, John Pinkney. First down, Stanford at the 48. The Stanford 48-yard line. UCLA 20, Stanford 17, two and a half minutes to play third quarter. Mike Walden and Jack Snow from the Rose Bowl. And it's been quite an exciting game. A lot of turnovers, not well executed at times, but interesting and close. Volpe carries to the 50, nailed by Jim Waller. 
Second and eight at the 50. You look back at the Stanford team. They lost seven to three at Oregon. Beat Arizona State 24 to three in Palo Alto. They had a 20-20 tie with Oregon State. Lost at Washington 28 to 25 and lost last week to Washington State 24-21 and in another tight one with UCLA. Batson has it batted away. Batson had it knocked away by Stacy Argo, who came close to intercepting again. Well, on that route, the receiver wants to hit that little seam. The quarterback's got to throw it in between the two linebackers. We'll get another shot of it, but an excellent job by Stacy Argo dropping back. Now, watch Johnson. He tries to force that ball. He should have waited one more count. Stacy Argo is dropping back into, into his assigned area. A nice job by Argo. Almost comes up with the interception. Here he is, 41, talking about how he should have made the catch. Third and seven at the 49. Johnson in trouble, throws over the head of Batson. Johnson just had to get rid of it. He was about ready to go down. And Batson is 5'10", and the pass was a good two feet over his head. Again, good pressure on the part of the Bruins defensively coming from the outside, and Chance Johnson in particular forced him, that man right there, to get rid of that ball a little bit early. The Bruins have intercepted four passes today. Coming into this game for the season, the entire season, UCLA had intercepted only eight. Four of those coming here today. They got four, so they are having a great productive day from the intercepted passes category. Left-footed kick by Hopkins will be fielded by Henley at the nine. Henley is dropped at the five. 41-yard punt by Hopkins. 20 to 17, UCLA leading, 140 to play in the third quarter. Next week, it'll be USC, UCLA, right here at the Rose Bowl. And the delayed telecast of this game on Prime Ticket will air next Sunday night, November the 20th at 7.30. The Bruins will have a first down, the ball at the UCLA six. It's Estwick, the fullback, and Estwick cracks up to about the eight yard line. Pick up of a couple. UCLA 20 to 17 over Stanford, the third period winding down. Stanford Cardinal defense very tough against the run. What UCLA does not want to do, they don't want to give it up here. They do not want to cough it up this close to their goal line, so they're going to have to maintain possession, get a little breathing room, and get rid of it via the punt if they can't continue to maintain a good, solid possession drive. Reggie Moore split to the right side, and the slot is far. Aikman wants to throw if he can across the middle, and Charlie Arbuckle drops the ball. Nothing wrong with the throw, or rather by Corwin Anthony, who's nothing wrong with the throw by Aikman. Anthony simply didn't have the concentration to bring it home. You see you're running out of a slot. You see Anthony 90 come into your pitcher right. The ball's right there in the breadbasket. All he's got to do is make it, puts his hands to his helmet and says, oh, no, I know I should have had it. What have I done? Well, what you've done is you put your team in a third and long situation. Third and eight at the UCLA eight. Far is open and far catches the pass at the 15 dropped by Kevin Scott but it's going to be two yards shy of a first down and the Bruins will be forced to punt. It's going to be close Mike. No I don't know. It's going to be close. Very close to first down. No, it's depending on where they mark it of course. Yep. They're going to take a measurement but Elway's hoping naturally that he is short. Certainly not going to be two yards. And enough for a first down. Well, how about that? Well, I'll tell you what, if it was not a first down, the guy who would have really gotten chewed on would have been Mike Farr, as you look at Jack Elway trying to regroup a little bit here. But Farr and receivers are taught that what you've got to do is you've got to pick up the yardage for the first down. Never be short. That was awful close, but at least he came away with the first down. Corwin Anthony is in the slot. Far wide.
wide to the right. Tailback is Brian Brown. First and ten from the 16. It's Brown. Brian Brown. Brown goes up close to the 20, and Rob Hinckley is on his back. 20 seconds left in the third period. UCLA 20 and Stanford 17, which should set the stage for a wild and woolly wind up here today at the Rose Bowl. Get ready to head into that fourth quarter. We'll tell you that defensively, Stanford does their best work in the fourth quarter. Well, we'll see if you will be able to hold on. The Bruins leading after three, 20 to 17. First play coming up in the fourth quarter. And it's been quite a struggle here in this game between UCLA and Stanford. Crowd in excess of 70,000 on hand for the UCLA homecoming game here in Pasadena. Next week it'll be jam-packed. The SC-UCLA game was sold out back in September. So that means in excess of 100,000 next Saturday. Gary Donahue with Rick Neuheisel and Carl Durrell. You will probably are seeing why does Durrell have gloves on so he can signal in the plays. Temperature at 73 degrees when we started. Second and six. Aikman throws and the pass is grabbed by Mike Farr. And Farr holding on to the ball as Mike Newton came over to make the tackle. Well, they're running out of a slot formation and it's man to man. The receivers against the defensive backs. The DBs are getting no help over the top or underneath. UCLA has got to recognize that and get to those guys in a hurry. They had Farr on that last play. He tried to maintain his balance. He just couldn't do it, though. Nice effort by Mike Farr. And a first down for UCLA at the 28. Farr has caught five for 37. David Keating to the left. The give is to the tailback. That's Brian Brown. Brown is struggling to get back to the line of scrimmage. Rob Hinckley is right there again. I don't know how many tackles that Rob Hinckley has yet today, but he's got a whole bushel full. In total yards, UCLA, look at that margin, almost a hundred more yards than Stanford, and yet UCLA is in a real struggle here, leading 20 to 17 over Stanford. Well, we go back to that one interception that Troy Aikman threw in the end zone that was intercepted by Cook. I think that was a big turning point in favor of Stanford. Aikman back, setting up, and he is sacked by Rob Hinckley. That is the 15th tackle today for the 6'5", 245-pound junior, Rob Hinckley. He's going to get some All-America recognition for next season, that's for sure, based on his performances the last two weeks. Hinckley, number 43, he's coming in again. He just had an outstanding, he, from the right side, an outstanding All-American, definitely all Pac-10 performance. This kid is going to be one tired hombre when this ball game is over. Rob Hinckley has had 15 tackles and four sacks today. Wow. That's a season's work for a lot of defensive players. Brian Brown busts it up to the 30, up to the 33. Tony Michi, the linebacker, catches up. So a pickup of... Uh, a lot. Close to, yeah, 13 yards or so for Brian Brown. And it'll be fourth down for UCLA, and Mark Gate will have to punt. It'll be fourth and about five. Well, Mark Gate tracking punt He needs a good one here, Mike. He's got the top one. Get up around that long that he has at 45. He needs a good, good shot right here. John Winnick ready to make the snap. And the punt by Mark Gate. He booms it out. Grant fields the ball at the 29. Grant to the 35 and put down at the 36. Alan Grant tackled by Matt Darby. 40 yards on the punt, 7 yards on the return. It's UCLA 20, Stanford 17, 12 and a half to go. So Stanford down by 3 points. Coming right back here with a first down at the 36. Brian Johnson, who has gone most of the way after he relieved Jason Columbus, is pulled down by Jim Waller, the nose guard. So Johnson is sacked, and Waller celebrates. Brian Johnson wanting to go to his outside receiver, Henry Green, on a stop-and-go route. He pumped on the stop. 
then pulled it back down, and by that time, the rush of UCLA was all around him and brought him down for about a yard loss. The big story for Stanford is the fact that uh, this young man replaced Columbus after Jason at one stage had thrown nine straight completions. He was nine out of nine. Then the pass was high, an interception, and Columbus goes to the sidelines, and Brian Johnson has been in there the rest of the way. Johnson's got time across the middle, and the receiver, Jim Price, the tight end, slipped and fell, just as Johnson was delivering the throw. I tell you, Price did a good job of getting open. He saw the open hole in the zone defense. He ran a square in route, and that ball was a little bit behind him. He tried to put the brakes on to come back, but just couldn't uh, couldn't control. You'll see him from the left side of your screen. Watch the bottom left. He comes in right there. He's stopping to try to come back for the football, and he just can't do it. He slips and goes down. Had he been able to keep his footing, he would have had a reception, that's for sure. Brian Johnson is 10 out of 20 for 103 yards. One touchdown, three have been intercepted. Columbus, on the other hand, 10 out of 11, 71 yards, and the one interception. Johnson across the middle to Henry Green, and Green grabs the ball at the 40. Tackled by Marcus Turner. Well, that's a nice completion, but it doesn't do anything except pick up four or five yards and brings up fourth down. So the UCLA fans really realizing the importance of this game, cheering on the Bruins. John Hopkins ready to punt. Henley is deep for UCLA, standing back on his 24. UCLA 20, Stanford 17, 11 minutes left. Good snap from Richardson. Doesn't travel very far, goes high enough, and hits at the 33, and takes a UCLA bounce, and is down there by Stanford's Arnie Pelour, who was the brother of the former Washington quarterback, and now with the Dallas Cowboys, Steve Pelour. That punt by Hopkins was good for only 23, 23 yards. Troy Aikman has yet to throw a touchdown pass in the game, and we have just under 11 minutes left. Aikman has thrown at least one touchdown pass in every game this season. In fact, in five of the games, he's had three touchdown passes. But none so far today. UCLA 20 to 17 over Stanford. Aikman ready to throw it. He's going to be wrapped up. Aikman is hit by Chuck Robinson, filling in for the injured Bruce Lang, an outside linebacker. Smart move on the part of the defensive coordinator, Dick Bonini, for Stanford. Bring these linebackers at least one or two on every down coming from the outside. They don't have enough men to block. Chuck Robinson, as you said, playing for the injured Bruce Lang, doing an outstanding job. And there's another guy, 243, well, Rob Hinckley. Robinson hitting from the right side, and Hinckley hit him from the left side. Hinckley's been all over. He's been the, another member of the Bruin backfield today. As Aikman throws, and the pass is caught by Mike Farr. Mike Farr. And Farr struggles to pick up a couple of extra yards, and then is put down by Lester Archibald. This is what Farr has done. Most receptions in a season, 52. By far tied with Cormac Carney, who is now in fourth spot with 46 catches coming into today's game. Mike's caught six. Look at him, 52, the sole man in the lead right there. There he is, Mike Farr. And yet he has not caught a touchdown pass this season. Third and eight at the 39. Aikman will run. Aikman's got a first down up to the 50. The defensive back, Brad Cook, made the hit, and Aikman appears to be in some pain. Yeah, he took a shot. He got up a little bit slow. He took a, a real good pop. The only thing that he's concerned about is, did I make the first down? He's going to drop back. He does have far deep down the middle on a curl route, but he feels the pressure, and I would too after the day he's had in that uh, backfield, in that pocket. Now watch him go straight up the gut, find a little bit of seam behind. Eswick buries his head and just gets all he can get before he's knocked down by Brad Cook. First and 10, UCLA, the ball at the 50. UCLA 20, Stanford 17, nine minutes left here at the Rose Bowl. Hardly anybody has left. John Will. And Wills carries for a yard. Tackled by Chuck Robinson.
It's been a nail biter for Terry Donahue. Darren Lindsay, the senior football manager, right back of Coach Donahue, along with Rick Neuheisel. That much time left, about eight and a half minutes. David Keating to the right side. And Reggie Moore to the left. Estwick Brown in the backfield. Setting up to throw his Aikman if he can, and down he goes. He wanted to go deep, but Ray Huckstein grabbed him just as he got ready to throw. Huckstein, the nose guard of Stanford. Now you can see why the Stanford team has been in so many football games through the course of this year. They get an excellent pass rush from Ray Huckstein. And when he's not doing it, both Rob Hinckley and Chuck Robinson have been doing an outstanding job. There's Huckstein, 25 tackles coming into today's ball game, his second sack of the season. Third and 13 for the Bruins at the UCLA 47. Far Aikman throws complete to Mike Farr at the 40. It's going to be close to a first down. Rob Englehart making the tackle at the Stanford 40-yard line. The one official is marking it on one side of the 40-yard line, which means he probably does not have the first down. Looked to me like he fell across the chalk stripe, but let's wait and see where they... Now they're going to mark it on this side, which means he's going to be short. Larry Thompson calls for a referee's timeout. He wants a measurement. The ball, the nose of the ball, is tickling the 40-yard line. Chancellor Charles Young of UCLA in the dark glasses along the UCLA sideline. There's Ted Williams, running back's coach with the headset. Bob Beal is the head linesman. The line judge is Charles McFerrin. Going to be short by about a yard. You know, they got the yard marker over there close to the... I'm glad you said it because it's true. I mean, yeah. you, if you're an official, you can see the yard markers on the other side of the 40. The football is on this side of the 40. Why even bring it in? It's, it's ridiculous. Fourth and one on the 40 yard So line. it's fourth and uh, a little bit less than a yard. 7.36 left in the game. Quite often in this situation, if the Bruins elect to go for it, and they will, quarterback sneak. They have done that on so many occasions before. Let's see if it's Troy Aikman's number again. It is. Troy Aikman. And of course, depending on where the ball is marked, the result of that quarterback sneak. Terry looks a little calm and cool and collected along the sideline. The umpire, Seven, Mel Chappelle, there with the ball. 70, yeah, they got it. 552 Big play for UCLA. Remember the last time they had a fourth down and they went fourth, they did not pick it up. Well, Thompson has called for another measurement. Well, I guess he just wants to make sure, Mike. Yep. More than the length of the football in this case. But we must give, you know, I'm not downgrading the officials. Let's say this, if one of the guys in the defense says, hey, we want a measurement because that looks awful close, those officials will give, will give the measurement. The attendance today, 70,552. 70,552. The Bruins with the first down at the Stanford 39, leading 20 to 17. Far in motion. It's Estwick. Estwick at the 30, the 25, 20, the 15. Estwick is out of bounds at the 2. A good block from the split end, Reggie Moore, freeing Estwick to run 38 yards. First and goal at the Stanford 2. Mark Estwick takes it in off his left guard. Rick Meyer, the blocker, gets a good block for Moore. Number four pushes 18. Brad Cook right by him. A nice adjustment on the part of Mark Estwick. And now it's off to the races. Rob Hinckley comes in there, reaches up, grabs him by the hip pad, drags him out of bounds at the two-yard line. 
There is the young man, 5'10", 223-pound sophomore out of La Cañada, California. Estwick doesn't carry the ball often coming into the game. He had carried it only 41 times this season, and generally two yards at a pop. Here is Brian Brown, stopped at the one-yard line by Rob Engelhart. Rob Engelhart on the tackle. Second and goal. And the ball will be put down well, right closer to the two. So call it second and goal at the two-yard line. Aikman signaling in to Donnie here. He wants to play sent in there. And a little hand signals back and forth. This could be the coup de grace by UCLA. It's 20 to 17 Bruins. Six minutes and 20 seconds left. Second and goal. It is Brian Brown. He gets in there. about your second effort talk about your third and fourth effort Brian Brown simply would not be denied going in from two yards out his second touchdown today remember he got a seven yard touchdown run in the first half I'll tell you what this is one of the greatest individual efforts you'll ever see after a fake into Estrick now watch Brown looks like he's going to be tackled behind the line of scrimmage a couple of guys get a shot at him Chuck Robinson number one Cook number two but he just continues to drive keep those legs going excellent excellent job by Brian Brown and the point after by Velasco is good so the Bruins now have a 10 point breathing room 27 to 17 over Stanford with 609 to play College Football 88 is brought to you by Miller High Life. Brewed to be smooth, never bitter. Takes time to make, time to enjoy. By Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. And by Carl's Jr. Restaurants. Try the Western Bacon Cheeseburger only at Carl's Jr. The choice is yours. Look at the run by Brian Brown one more time. Excellent job. Now watch him keep those feet going. One, two, three Cardinals have him. He's in the grasp of a 98 Chuck Robinson, but fights through the grasp, knocks over a couple of Cardinals and into the end zone for the touchdown. Excellent afternoon of running the football by Brian Brown. Shot of Sean Howard along the sideline with Tom Lasalette discussing that hard run by Brian Brown. UCLA with 201 yards rushing a minus seven for Stanford. That's unbelievable. Boy, that is just unbelievable. When you think about this game and you go back to a key, I think it has to be when Lodish knocked the ball away from Johnson and lumbered in 15 yards for the score. That seemed to be the momentum turnaround for UCLA. Alan Grant. And Grant gets it out to the 23. Stanford now trailing by 10, six minutes left in the game with the first down at the Stanford 23-yard line. And our thanks go out to Jerry Romano, our producer, Dennis Kirkpatrick, Dennis Manishin, Doug Freeman, Ken Breitstein, Dave Walden for all of their help along the telecast today. Thank you, guys, and everybody else in the crew. First and 10 at the 23. Young in motion. The pass to Young is dropped by Young. It was thrown low by Brian Johnson. The halftime score was Stanford 14, UCLA 10, and the Bruins were booed off of the field at the end of the first half. That guy's got to improve on those stats right now if he wants to get this Cardinal team back in his ball game. No more interceptions, and he'd better put a couple of TDs on the board. But those boos soon turned to cheers as the defense rose to the occasion. Motivated by the UCLA crowd that turned around and gave the UCLA defense a big lift. Second and ten. Walsh in motion. Johnson comes up to the line. I think he's across the line. I'm not sure, but it looked like he was across the line of scrimmage. Yep, there goes the penalty marker. The line of scrimmage was the 23. It looked like he threw that ball from the 24-25. Well, just indecision on the part of 
Brian Johnson, when you get in a situation like that, you've got to know where you are, and if you don't, just keep the ball and run it out of bounds. Just get out of bounds. Don't uh, take any chances. He took a chance right there, and unfortunately, it's going to cost him. Yep. It's going to cost him not only the penalty, but the loss of a down. So he crossed the scrimmage line, and that'll be a five-yard penalty and loss of a down. So now the ball goes back to the eight. Now they're going to go back to the 20-yard line. Threw it from the 25. That sets up a third down and a 13 situation for Stanford from their 20. UCLA 27, Stanford 17. The Bruins trying to nail this one down and get ready for SC here in the Rose Bowl next week. Johnson steps up to the line and completes this one to Walsh at the 36. Chris Walsh making the grab, a gain of 16. And that's going to be enough for the first down for Stanford. So the Cardinal hopes are still alive. As you look into the face of the 20-year-old sophomore quarterback out of Oakland. Brian Johnson did a good job of stepping up into the pocket, feeling the pass rush from the outside, steps up a couple feet, and connects with Chris Walsh. Excellent job by Brian Johnson. John Pinckney wide to the right side. In motion, Charles Young. And Johnson goes down. Put down by Jim Waller, the nose guard. That's his second quarterback sack today. You can tell he's a nose guard. Notice how scarred that helmet is. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, the paint off the gold helmet has definitely been uh, scratched up quite a bit. And there's a lot of orange on that helmet. There's gold, and that may have been from the uh, Oregon Ducks last week. He had an outstanding game last week. 12 tackles, three of them for losses, one quarterback sack. He's having fun playing football since that article in the paper a few weeks ago. He's really enjoying the game of football now. Which cost him a one-game suspension. UCLA has recorded seven sacks, and look at Johnson running for his life and running up close to the 40. Four and a half minutes left in this one. UCLA up by 10, 27-17 over Stanford. Jim Waller on the tackle once again. Tell you what, and Waller will be tired right now. He's chased that guy all over the field, both he and Craig Davis combining to bring him down on that last play. When you chase a quarterback around, after you have spent time trying to get by the man blocking you, it, it's an exhausting feat, believe me. Well, I shouldn't say believe me. I've never had to do that. I've never played nose guard. <laughs> Batson wide to the left along with Chris Walsh. Johnson throwing to the outside. It's batted up into the air, and it comes right back over, I think, to Johnson. Yeah, Johnson threw the ball, it was batted up into the air, and there was Johnson to grab it. And that goes into one of those rare statistical categories, a completed pass to oneself. Was watching the receiver down the field, but let's see what happens right here. Here comes the, the uh, pressure. I think it's Racine Keaton who gets a hand up in the air, and pops it in the air, presence of mind of Brian Johnson to stay with the football and does make the catch and gets what he can get. We've got an injured UCLA player down. It looks like it may be Jim Waller. I'm not sure. There was some doubt whether Waller would even be able to start today due to a pinched nerve in his neck, but he's played a lot. And the trainers are out there to look him over. He may have a little bit of a ding, Mike, but I can guarantee you that he is, is really tired. And I can guarantee you, unless this injury is major, Waller will be answering the call next Saturday. He loves to play against USC. Jim Waller will be replaced by Andre Farr, redshirt freshman. He's going to be okay, though. He's coming off the field. Talking with Greg Robinson, the defensive line coach. He needs just a, a play or two to rest, regroup, get some strength back, and he should be back out there. This could be the last play of the game for Stanford. Three and a half minutes to go. Pass is juggled and then almost intercepted. Charlie Young had the ball, juggling it like a hot potato, and Dion Lambert was right there with him. I think Charlie Young realized that Lambert was so close by it, took his eye off of the ball. Charlie Young on the lower right hand. He's got a once. 
Now twice he loses it. Deion Lambert comes in. He looks like he's got control, and he tries to stop. He loses the football. Looks like a circus out there to do the old juggling act. So the Bruins will take over now with the first and 10. The ball at the 38. 327 left. UCLA 27 and Stanford 17. So the Bruins just need a couple of first downs to run out the game. Danny Thompson coming this way. It's Wills. Sean Wills into the middle. And Wills goes down to the 28. Rob Hinckley in on the tackle. Looks yep. like a rugby match there. I was going to say, there'll be some extracurricular now these next couple of plays, and the officials are going to have to do a good job of separating these guys and uh, keeping them from getting into something. That's on top of the roof of the Rose Bowl, the top of the light standards on top of the roof here at the Rose Bowl. He's nuts. He's absolutely nuts. Nobody around him, though. He doesn't have to worry about people getting in and out. I want to see him get down. That's going to be the question. Lock is running. UCLA has three timeouts, and Stanford has three timeouts. It's Maury Toy, the fullback, and he goes to the 30-yard line. Lead up the clock. Pretty soon, I think Stanford will have to start using some of those timeouts. I think they just have. Yep, Stanford calls a timeout. That'll stop the clock at 2.27, and Elway walking up the sidelines, thinking, hey, another close are behind this late in the game. UCLA 27, Stanford 17. Tuesday, It's Your Call previews the upcoming SCUCLA football matchup. You'll have an opportunity to talk with former Heisman Trophy winners Mike Garrett of USC and Gary Beban of UCLA. It's your call Tuesday, live at 6.30, here on the Prime Ticket Television Network. UCLA 27, Stanford 17. That much time remaining. I would be very, very surprised to see Aikman throw a pass. It's Sean Wills over tackle, picking up a couple of more. This will be the first time this season that Troy Aikman has not thrown a touchdown pass. And the stats on Troy Aikman today, 13 out of 34 for 100, 13 out of 24 for 135 yards and one interception. But Troy Aikman will gladly point to the fact that, hey, this one is going into the W column, not an L. Well, that's the key. That's the type of guy he is, and Donahue's happy with that, too. He wants to make sure he gets a W. He doesn't care who does what or what the statistics are. He just wants to win. And a win today would be the seventh time for Troy Donahue to win nine or more games in the season. Wills around the right side. Wills is close to a first down, right around the 17 or 18. Sean Wills getting some playing time now as Brian Brown takes a breather. The Bruins have been playing today minus their number one rusher, Eric Ball, out with a sprained ankle. Ball is expected to be back for USC. Nothing against Eric Ball, but Brian Brown has had a tremendous day today, too, and I'm not so sure they really missed Eric that much. And after watching the film, Eric's ankle will get better in a hurry, believe me. Brian Brown had 105 yards in 26 carries and two touchdowns. Runs of seven and two yards. Velasco has kicked a couple of field goals, 23 and 38 yards. And Stanford got a one-yard quarterback sneak touchdown from Brian Johnson. Then Johnson passing to Price five yards for a score. And a 38-yard field goal by Hopkins. That's a summary of the scoring. Kevin Smith, the ball carrier for UCLA. And the fullback gets a couple. 116 left, UCLA 27, Stanford 17. So the SC game will mean something for Terry Donahue and the Bruins. If they can knock off SC next Saturday, UCLA will go to the Rose Bowl. And this will be the 70th victory for Terry Donahue putting him into such select company as uh, John McKay of USC and Don James of Washington. 70 victories in the conference. This is Terry's 13th year as head coach. It is Kevin Smith. 
Kevin Smith is close to the goal line, but he did not get in. Smith is 6'4", a 240-pound redshirt freshman out of the same high school that produced the Stanford quarterback, Brian Johnson. Skyline in Oakland. And Smith just rumbled for 15 yards. Talk about a load at 240 pounds. Only four carries coming into today's ball game. Here's his fifth carry, and it's a nice one. He gets by Ray Huckstein, the nose guard. Now he's reading his blocker, especially Mike Farr right there. Bounces to the outside. He'll take a shot right here to keep him from getting into the end zone, but a nice run, in fact, by the freshman Kevin Smith. You saw Donahue run down there a moment ago, and what he wanted to do was to keep that short yardage team out of there, I believe. 22 seconds, and probably the quarterback will just let the uh, clock run out. No sense to get another score here. Well, I think Stanford would probably take a timeout, most likely. Well, let's see. Did they have any left? Yes, they had one left. Penalty marker is dropped. Delay of the game against UCLA. Yeah. We'll take the snap, drop to a knee, and it'll all be over. So Terry said the bottom line is got to be a win, whether it's 27-17 or 34-17. Or 7-6. He's out of here. <laughs> He's out of here. And he was down 14-10 at the half. Nineteen seconds left. Aikman comes out of the huddle very slowly. Probably will drop down on one knee and just wind it up right here. Yep, that's going to be the case. Crowd doesn't like it, but then you don't have to coach. And uh, Terry Donahue walks off with a victory, his 107th in his career. And Donahue now has 70 conference victories. And for the seventh time in his 13 years at UCLA, Terry Donahue has coached UCLA to nine victories in a season. The Bruins went 10 and 2 last year and now are 9 and 1 and 6 and 1 in the league. The final score here at the Rose Bowl, UCLA 27 and Stanford 17.